Hi, everyone. Hello. Welcome to A, a Podcast, podcast Will Save, Save This relationship. relationship. I'm Josh, he, him. I'm Sarah, she, her. And on today's episode of the podcast, we talked about Marmaduke. And I've given up with the pronoun thing. Josh will just go first every time. Yeah. Shame him in the comments for stealing no. a woman's no. honor. No. <laughs> I don't know. It's fucking 2.30 a.m. We talked about Marmaduke straight up for an hour. I said that we, I was going to, uh, <laughs> I was going to, uh, fucking synopsize Marmaduke and then Josh interrupted me the entire way. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, there's a lot to talk about Marmaduke. There Marmaduke really is, is a beautiful, not. shitty movie. <laughs> and then we talked about, uh, Saturday morning all-star hits. Yeah, and, that, and how it's a good show. It is a good show. And, and then, then we, I read a wolf story. Yeah, because we had a buy me a coffee that, that uh, wanted me to wanted do me it. To, yeah, so we're doing it. And it's a new segment, so everybody enjoy that and say in the comments that you want to see more of it. We're at four hours, Sarah. Come on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We gotta fucking... <laughs> Yeah, we gotta go. Yeah, um, um, but and then, then we took Red and Lister stories. Yeah. Uh, we did. We talked about cookies and brownies and all delicious Suicide sweets. Suicide and death. <laughs> Jesus. And misgendering, a lot of misgendering. Yeah, a lot of misgendering, yeah. A lot actually. of shitty moms. A lot of shitty one. moms in this one, yeah. Huh. Fun episode. Fun. A lot of very emotionally whiplashing, <laughs> as as said in the most recent Apple review. <laughs> That'd be so funny Isn't if that, that was true. No, it's not. <laughs> but it should be. Five stars. <laughs> emotional not. whiplash. Emotional whiplash, five stars. God. God. But yeah, if you if you enjoy this podcast, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit Truth. the goddamn bell on YouTube and rate hit us five stars. Goddamn bell. Spotify and Apple, five stars. And also check out our Patreon and buy me a coffee at APWSCR each. All the links are in the description. Links yeah. to submit stories are in the description. And hopefully you enjoy the show. Yeah, I hope so. It, we're very tired. It is unironically 2.45 in the morning. Yeah, so enjoy us. We started from... at 10.30. <laughs> yeah, enjoy us from four hours ago, guys. Oh, start, start the podcast with that. <laughs> yeah, you just, fucking pedophile. <laughs> just anyway, just guys, there. welcome just to the podcast. <laughs> you guys, you're fucking, figure. you're fucking pedophile. You're just fucking like a pedophile. Absolutely, Tim. Sarah, is that to is that to the audience or is that to me? <laughs> no, like I'm looking at you, like you know, like Tim and Eric on cinema at the cinema. Oh yeah, Tim and uh, Greg. <laughs> Oh god. Just like going up and being like, I swear to god, you fucking bitch, if you talk to me like that again. <laughs> anyway, welcome, welcome to On Cinema, Cinema at, at the, the Cinema. Cinema. <laughs> I'm Tim Heidecker. And this is and this is my uh co-host Greg. Hey guys. It's <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, how you doing, sir? Doing good. How you doing? I'm I'm doing good. Uh You um, know what that just reminded me of? What did that remind you of? Because of my brain, like we talked about a couple of seconds ago. That reminded me of the 30 rock joke of um <laughs> where uh they're in college and uh uh Jenna and uh Liz Lemon are <laughs> doing improv yeah. for the first time. And the announcer <laughs> goes, "All right, uh, at at fast at a fast food restaurant, uh, Sling Blade and Oprah." And then Liz Lemon goes, <laughs> "Boy, I do like these French fried potatoes." <laughs> and then Jenna goes, "No, you don't, Oprah." <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. That is a good one. That's how Shit. I felt. That's how you felt. Okay, that's with fair. your perfect Greg, and I'm just like, "Hi, I'm Tim." <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. I, I perfected it. You yeah, have I, perfected, I perfected Greg. It. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't like I should have like a sign on my head that says Tim. <laughs> yeah, during our when we go to Comic Con and we cosplay. Yeah, Gabagool, I don't fucking know. God. Oh, you know what I haven't done? Uh I guess my hair's gonna be down for this podcast. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I like it when it's down. Sorry, world. <laughs> You don't like it when it's down? Uh, it gets in my way a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. And, uh, <laughs> typical Josh getting in his own way. <laughs> <laughs> Big oof. Big oof. I don't know how to talk about Marmaduke. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, uh, yeah. I know it's a bit of a harsh thing, but... Um, yeah, I don't know really... I don't know how to jump into that <laughs> because feels... I have a lot to say. <laughs> you have a lot to say? I have a lot to say. I'm terrified right now because... I don't remember a fucking Good. thing. You you live in lucky lucky land where lucky land yeah lucky land where 
where you uh-huh. don't have to remember the fucking Marmaduke movie. I remember the racism. <laughs> I remember the basic plot of the beginning of the movie. Oh, because that's a separate movie. Yeah, it's a completely <laughs> different movie. And then I remember <laughs> that he poops in the cup. Oh, yeah, he does. Okay, so... Uh, so, so okay, I just... Let's... It's like random things. It's like a fucking fever dream. Like PTSD, Vietnam. <laughs> yeah, bullshit, where it's yeah. like, yeah, you, you hear uh, Fortunate Son start playing when you think of the Marmaduke 3D animated Netflix movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which now you have to do. Yeah. I have to put as much... I can't put that in because we're going to fucking put, copyright strikes. You have to put as much Fortunate Son as you possibly could put in before we get copyright strike. This is going to be one beat. Yeah, just be... Burp. Yeah, so just like that. yeah, just like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so background. Uh, we, like, you know, we have our yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> we have our um, you know, weekly meetings now. Oh yeah, know. we do. We and have a we have a or with our intern Carly. We do. And Carly told us that she watched this uh, not Drew Gooden, the other guy, Danny Gonzalez video. Danny Gonzalez video about yeah. Marmaduke. About Marmaduke, a video I haven't seen yet. I want to save yeah, that for we the still record. Haven't seen I've done it everything I can to not watch it. Which yeah. wasn't hard because that video has not been recommended to me. I don't think you are subscribed to Danny I'm Gonzalez. Probably not. But <laughs> Josh makes me watch just his YouTube channel because and he has just, YouTube Red. Yeah, and I have uh, ads. So every time he sneaks off to go do computers, you I change this, it to my account, and so then you can get the sweet Danny Gonzalez content. Drew Gooden, Jarvis Johnson, all yeah. those stuff. Yeah, fair enough. But no, so yeah, she told us that she watched that video and thought we would enjoy watching the movie or have a have a gay old time talking I, about it. I don't know if she said you guys are going to really enjoy it. I think she said you should watch it. Watch the movie. Which is different, I think. Yeah, no, I think she did say watch the movie. You need to watch this is different than I really I think, think you're you going to have a great it. time you watching this movie. love this movie. No, so yeah, so... Because she did follow it up with it's terrible in every possible way and she was right she was right she yes. is right um I, there's a lot of problems with this movie uh we watched it a week list ago them. josh list them right now uh, did you okay so list them now go uh, pacing plot pacing scripts. is the worst you're right pacing pacing is probably the worst of all of them animation the animation's really bad sound design character design uh lip syncing <laughs> <laughs> really bad <laughs> was pretty bad at some points racism um stereotypes you have to do a lot to make lip syncing above racism <laughs> they put christianity <laughs> in the movie oh yeah there's a there is there is a christian god source material i mean i was really trying uh, to pete think davidson pete davidson's in is it. a pretty big problem pete, da- pete davidson is As in it marmaduke I yeah kind of, okay listen as much like listen, I feel like there's unnatural hate going on for Pete Davidson. He was a a regular SNL. Sometimes he's funny, sometimes he's not comedian. You know, Dad That's died rare. in 9-11, yeah, dating yeah. Kim Kardashian, has BPD. All the things that we know about Pete Davidson, just make him a guy. He's just a guy. He's yeah. just a dude. He's just a guy, and they gave him the lead role in because he the fucks. Marmaduke movie. But I really think, compared to everybody else, including the bad guy. Oh, including J.K. Simmons? Yeah. Character? Yeah. Dog? Yeah. <laughs> Is it, can we I say character? Pete Davidson did a good job with his voiceover. That's fair. Okay. I think I can... he's the most enthusiastic about this movie that he could be as Marmaduke. <laughs> you know? You know, I uh, that's fair. Okay. I can I can kind of understand that. There are some lines where he's like, "I'm Marmaduke." You know? <laughs> yeah. And then there are some ones where he's like, "I got to win the competition." And yeah, like, yes. you know, for what it came out as, God bless that he was that excited and put yeah. that much effort into this. Uh, <laughs> I think he deserves his flowers yeah. for the Marmaduke movie. Okay, all right. Okay, fair enough. Do you think he deserves an academy? Do you think he no. deserves a- <laughs> I don't think he deserves much else more than that. I don't think he's a very attractive man. I think he looks like a chameleon, like a like a Victorian ghost of a god, chameleon. Don't, don't pull this up again. Oh, my God. I don't Having understand why every the- woman wants to sleep with him. And I don't mean... Um, Kim Kardashian or Ariana Grande. I just mean like regular women. <laughs> Fucking normies. Normies or, that are now <laughs> thirsting after Pete Davidson and MGK. Don't understand the type. I think he's a fine person. Yeah, no, I think he's whatever. I think he probably, he was the only one that I really believed 
wanted to do this movie. You tell, you're telling me you didn't believe the dad character played by one of the guys from Anchorman? And really? Yeah, David Kushner is his name, I think. David Kushner? David, no, it's Co- It's like a K-O-E-C-A. He's a, uh, who the fuck is he? He was in The Office. I think he was uh, Will Ferrell's friend in The Office. Do you remember that? No. I don't remember. Fuck. I can't remember. He played, he's the dad in this movie. I, uh, he's in things. Okay. He's in stuff. <laughs> he's in things. Yeah. That's the best way I can describe him. Um, He's, um... I don't uh, even remember Will Ferrell having a friend on The Office. He had, like, a dude bro, like, uh, like, not manager, but, like... Like, bitch boy? Not even bitch boy. No, like, um... Oh. I don't know how to describe it, but I do... I vaguely remember this guy being in The Office. Okay. And wearing, like, a, a brown suit or, or something. I don't know why that's the detail that I remember. But, hmm. yeah, he's the dad. J.K. Simmons of Invincible fame yeah. and Spider-Man fame is the Swedish... Finnish, Norwegian dog, long haired, long blonde haired, cheating, uh, shampoo, cheating dog. shampoo dog. Yeah, I, I don't know who uh, any of the other voice actors are. I mean, like, if you're J.K. Simmons, why wouldn't you phone it in, though? You know, I think I mean, that's true. I think yeah, this is the one that you just do a paycheck for. Respect for that. I think definitely they didn't record the scenes together. Oh no, no. There there were all this was uh done separately from yeah. COVID and everyone had to use their own Yeah, they everybody the the thousand dollar Sennheiser microphones to everyone's house and just expected recorded them to recorded it through OBS and Zoom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Uh, no, because like what this movie came out this year, right? Yeah. It looks like it came out it, it looks worse it, than Food Fight. It looks like Ants, the movie. Yeah. Like that's the level of animation that we're at is like the beginning of animation. Yeah. Okay. So for children, I, I know we're we're gonna talk, we're, we're gonna have to talk about the plot eventually, but I wanted I need to talk about the animation in this movie. It it reminds me. It legit. I sat there and I was reminded of Star Trek: Wrath of Khan, which was like the first time animation was ever in a movie. Yeah. Which was just like the little map, <laughs> the little map yeah. of the world and how it blew everyone's minds. I just sat there thinking about like the train, you know, the train movie. Oh yeah, and like how thinking about like how Star Wars actually had decent practical and and visual effects, computer yeah. effects, and then this movie comes out in twenty twenty two, and this this would have fucking killed if it was in the nineteen thirties. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. If this was yeah, nineteen thirties, and this came out, would people like, oh, would have been oh, like, oh, "Oh my god, is that color?" <laughs> Whoa! Gee, Wilkers, that dog can talk. <laughs> a talking dog. A talking I can't dog. believe it. I can't believe it. Oh, do you remember that? Uh, there's that um, weird live action movie called A Talking Cat. And yes, it's like I've a seen question. the whole thing. Yeah, I've so, seen the whole thing twice, Josh. I, I don't know how. The, I don't movie. know how the fuck that movie's awesome. <laughs> that movie is fucking amazing. We need to watch it. And now you've yeah, you've opened yeah, no, the door I know, for I'm me. Sorry, but okay, but like yeah, like we're gonna have to watch it now. I don't know. That's that's the vibe I'm getting right now. It's yeah. like yeah, because like okay, I I remember the um. God, I wish we were talking about a talking cat. No, we had to talk <laughs> about Marmaduke because that's the, that's the movie we watched last week. At least this one, they didn't like hire a homeless person and like record him in a gas station bathroom. Yeah, right. <laughs> like they did in a talking cat. No, that's what they did with J.K. Simmons. <laughs> No, yeah. okay, so uh, uh, so I I I know a thing or two about animation. Yeah, I used to I used to mess around in Blender. Yeah, I've ma- I've made the donut for those of you, you that did, are aware. Yeah, Josh yeah. has made the donut. I don't in think I have. That might be a lie. Wow, Josh has lied about making the donut. Stay, in Blender, some stolen everybody. valor there, but that's fine. Uh, no, <laughs> like uh, no. So I mean, I don't know. I I mean, I know how to do a few things. Mm-hmm. I know how to make textures and materials that aren't off putting. Yeah. And How do you do that? Didn't, uh, Is it really hard? It's, <laughs> this movie made it seem like it's incredibly difficult <laughs> apparently, to make anything that's not off-putting. And apparently it's really hard to make a character have legs that are more than a millimeter in diameter. <laughs> <laughs> no, this movie did that a lot. Well, okay, it did that a lot for the for very female. specific female specific <laughs> characters. The asses in this movie are ass this is a pun and i mean it purposefully astronomical but (laughs) 
<laughs> I, I, no, no, cause okay, cause like, yeah, there's um, but okay, only this some. Not Josh all of them. is equivalent of fucking shooting himself. Yeah. No, okay. So no. So like, <laughs> like okay, you're you're half right because some, like the um the newscaster does the um, I think the mom character does. Yeah, she does. I think that literally every other woman. There's except a, no, for the pretty woman that you want. Oh yeah, the she's the skinny pretty yeah, one. Yeah, she's the skinny pretty one, and then also the, the I other... think the I think the Asian uh, dog owner also didn't have that fat of an ass, right? I guess because they're Asian, which that'll go into the racism. Yeah, but we'll get we'll get there. <laughs> and really, we're only saying that because the racism is so intense in this movie. We well, I need to wait to we need to set the stage it's because a, well, logical the leap that well, Asian the... women that are attractive can't be fat. Yeah, okay, because like, this okay, movie would the have reason that why logic. we're waiting for the racism is because the racism doesn't start until... It really does come and sucker punch you in the third act. Yeah, and it's like, um, okay, I don't want to, okay. And I guess it's because in the beginning, there's only white people? Yeah, there's only a bunch of crackers, right? It's, um... Uh, so the, they just, they just don't interact with any other races, so then every race that they meet in the third act... Do uh, we have yeah, to go because, through the story? Do we have to go play by play with yes, the story? Yes, we're going to have to. Yeah. Can I do it real quick? I, 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 you said you don't remember the story. I'm remembering it. I'm remembering it now. Okay, all and right. And you can I'll, interrupt me and I'll, tell I'll me. interrupt you and tell it. And, and and I'm a Marmaduke expert. I'll, it'll, it, I'm a Marma expert. I'm a Marma head. Marma head? <laughs> Marma Duke head. And I really do want to emphasize that the comic that this was based off of, really nothing happens. So they really had to pull something out of their little tight buttholes and their fat asses and their huge and their, their asses. huge female asses yeah because that's the only type of ass you see in this movie so we open with conflict right in the marmaduke movie <laughs> <laughs> there's no expo- exposition or it's, have we, have, it's have happening we, as the conflict can goes we, on can we talk about how stories are written <laughs> in no, america no because we, we'll be here too long no because we have to we have to talk about the story circle right everybody like, knows how a story fucking okay, works all right, Josh. okay all right you, there's you have an your... intro which doesn't exist for marmaduke it starts and the fucking movie starts full force there's a goddamn birthday party yeah okay there's a birthday party there's a fucking birthday party marmaduke is not fucking allowed <laughs> He's stuck in the the second story suburban white picket fence house. Yeah. And he's like flying around and daydreaming and talking to himself. Because he wants to go to the party. Yeah. And then the dad's cooking on the grill. And he's like, oh my God, I want that food. I want that steak. I want to eat that. I want to eat some burgers. And the the little piece of shit boy kid is like, where's Marmaduke? I want to have Marmaduke at my party, mom and dad. I love him. He's the family dog. And the parents go, he's a piece of shit, Billy. (laughs) That's why he's not fucking here. And then they, he's they a do piece a of garbage. Yeah, and then they do a, a a cut to Marmaduke in the window, and he's barking. But then they go back to Marmaduke and talking, he's talking in the next shot in the same so time. There's it's only a time rule. passes. So yeah. they set up a rule. Yeah, we, that this is a set up no rule. one can understand Marmaduke. Marmaduke is barking. They set that up immediately. They set that up immediately. And I don't want it. It doesn't take a stopwatch to until they break that rule. Yeah, spoiler but alert. That's, <laughs> that's, that's gonna not get a rule. broken. Yeah, that's it's a, it's forgotten about at some point. Yeah. Um. So okay. That, yeah, I mean, but, and oh. that's the only point of that shot too, right? Well, yeah. That, I mean, that or just they think it's funny. When animals are trying to co- like uh, yeah, contact a human, and but then it, it sounds like it's barking. So then they use it as an offhand joke, but that's not that's not that's a not joke. That's not a joke. That's literally yeah. your world building. It would be building. like if Chekhov's gun was in the first. You showed in the first act, and then you just have the gun floating around in the second and third <laughs> act, like I'm a gun. You know, like that's what it would be. And everybody's like, ha ha, <laughs> that's a gun, silly gun. I know you're a gun, and I know you want to shoot. And then they like go have tea and fuck they, themselves or something. Yeah, like they just don't know. It just well, yeah. doesn't give a shit yeah, about okay, that. Okay, okay, yeah. So they they have that, and this is also a pool party. Yeah, this um, is yeah. Oh, can we talk about fluid effects real quick? No, um, <laughs> Cause, no, because we'll be here forever. No, yeah, we have to be here forever. Okay, so there's um, there's a, a it's common in animation that water and hair are the worst fucking things to animate, and yes. they're very difficult. So when you have a movie, a, mo- a movie, a movie <laughs> like Marmaduke, where everything is bad. The water and the hair are going to be extra bad. Extra bad, and it's not even like just the water and hair. Whenever they do like splat effects. It's just yeah, a two D. It's, it's a two D draw, like photoshopped 
uh, dribble thing that they stretch out a little bit sometimes. S- something that like I've made, I've tried to animate once or twice in my life, and it made me want to kill myself. But if you really pressed me hard, you could to probably, go and do it. I could probably do yeah. it better. And like the uh, if you gave me like a a month. A month, yeah, just a month, just, a month just to, to do one splat that. effect. I could fucking you could probably, probably make it work. That. But no, it looked like um, it looked like food fight. It looked like um, yeah, the food lo- fight yeah. splatter. But food that fight, the movie. that happens. Um, uh, what is it? I think there's a a balloon guy who is a very important character. Uh, oh yeah, he's fucking he's actually important, important because he's in more than like. A scene. Four scenes. He's like he four shows scenes up like five times. The same joke, which we'll get to. But like, I think he has which, like um. I mean, if we're gonna talk about fluid effects, let's talk about the rule of threes in comedy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, usually, so, you know, something's only funny if you do it three times. But no, the fucking clown. Well, the rule of three is is like you set up a pattern in one and two where it's like uh, x x yeah. x y and then a instead of it being z, it's the misdirect, right? But like, with, no, it's um, not all the time. Well, I mean, that's that's usually like, what it, is it? it li- if you're gonna have an example of something, only do three. Okay, all right. That's yeah. what the rule three is. But like they, um, uh, what is it? Okay, so there's a point. I don't, I don't remember how Marmaduke gets out, and I don't really. I, th- I it don't fucking matter care. Because there's so a Marmaduke point. fucking gets out. He jumps he in out. the pool. The pool floods and causes like, like the Noah's Ark. Ark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A fucking, a of, fucking of fluid water. effects. <laughs> it drowns the entire neighborhood and the house. And the house. And uh, there's a balloon. The balloon guy's doing like things and he's like trying to do things. And he writes out SOS in balloons and haha funny. And that's the joke that will happen 17 times <laughs> yes, in this yeah. movie. So yeah, so uh, but yeah, and then Marmaduke, you know, because Marmaduke is like, um, what untrainable? Okay, okay, I he's remember this. He's a piece of shit dog. He's a piece of shit dog. And, he's a garbage um, dog. Because this movie takes place in a world where TikTok exists, yeah. you have to have a plot line where someone may- takes a video of Marmaduke. It's barely a plot line, but so he video they somebody videotapes Marmaduke jumping and, in the pool and causing like the world's next tsunami. You know what I mean? Yeah, where he's um, and let's talk about the uh, the it's like the cartoonish effect that's supposed to happen in two D, where it's like the Roadrunner runs off the cliff and then there's nothing behind yeah, him, and, then he, goes, and he looks down and then yeah. runs, keeps running and then falls down, and but that happens in three D, so it looks like shit. Uh, well, it but, could happen in three D. It's well, just it, it would it, it looks bad because the three D is bad. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So fucking and yeah. Then you have your, we have our first uh, big ass uh, news reporter. Yeah, legitimately like the size of a fucking end Dump table. Truck. Yeah, like width wise, like absolutely ridiculous. And I don't mean like dumb truck. Like you don't see ass because this is a children's movie. Yeah, no, but it's it's but a why is it's a very th- tight dress. Why is there the? <laughs> it's not. <laughs> It just, it's like she's, it's like one of those old Victorian dresses. You yeah. would expect a tight dress from a news reporter, you know what I mean? Yeah, but no, it, yeah, like, you're right. It has it's like, like the, she's wearing a dress skirt that like, well, you know, that, the, that has like, like a big like hoops, wire. Like a hoop like, skirt. Yeah, like a, yeah. That looks like what she's wearing, except it's obviously meant to be. <laughs> Her ass. All solid, yeah. Three D like, animated, yeah. It's a, it's a. They took a fucking uh, cylinder <laughs> and they carved out a woman yeah, yeah, from they, the top half. They just added the cylinder basic uh, blender thing and put a skirt around yeah. the bottom of this lady. Yeah, and the guy but, was like, "Well, at least now I don't have to animate her feet." That's what he thought. That's what he thought was when like, he oh. animated this lady. Uh, you know so what happens then, when you cut corners, right? She does the fucking news shit, and she's like, "This dog is a piece of shit and untrainable and I untrainable." Think, yeah. And then, then she uses the word untrainable, and then some fucking there's a yeah, there's a weird the, there's the character the dog trainer that like they, they the, for some reason this Baffles news reporter me. this news reporter is like, oh, even that fucking guy can't train this dog. Yeah, there's this fucking dope ass dog trainer, and she calls him out specifically. It says this guy can't even train this dog, and then, and then he he's goes mad fucking bet <laughs> bet bro <laughs> fucking bet so then he shows up at the at marmaduke's fucking house and it's like i want to beat the shit out of your dog <laughs> <laughs> that's basically yeah and no, then the, this guy wants to do yeah. some animal abuse to fucking marmaduke <laughs> and then the and parents then, are like no i don't want you to abuse my dog and he goes but but if I, he wins the dog competition he's gonna get a like a million prize. dollars yeah and then they go okay yeah you can beat the shit out of my dog for a million dollars <laughs> what am i fucking rich mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I don't, I don't fucking care. I think those are exact words. Yeah. <laughs> but no, so yeah, so then there's um Then he beats the shit out of Marmaduke like karate style. Yeah, there's um what is it? Like uh there's like a weird karate fight scene. Yeah. I think this is maybe I think we're ten minutes into the movie. Yeah, this maybe is seventeen about 15 minutes, minutes. Max. Yeah. And this is a tight ninety. This is a tight ninety. This was an eighty one page script, nine pages of title, you know. It really should have followed Save the Cat, but it did not. Well, it, it's close to you no, know it's no. not Save the Cat. <laughs> It doesn't say <laughs> start out in the middle of the main conflict. Mm. Yeah, okay, yeah, you're right. I know. That doesn't make any sense. No, but it follows it in the fact that there is 90 pages. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. It follows it only in number. <laughs> only in that and only in that regard. And there yeah. are characters. But yeah. okay, so uh so there's um what the, is it? Next up is the dog show. I'm really speeding through this cuz there's well, a no, lot because of we have points. To, no, because there is an important thing uh, in this in this thing is that the dog trainer Apparently knows how to do like a ghost kick or something, where like yeah, like he a just like stands kid. a karate yeah, but Skadoosh like douche from uh, Kung Fu Panda yeah, thing. where like instead of he just stands still, but he sends a kick out to Marmaduke and just fucking slaps him with his foot in the face yeah, like and it's like a ghost, it's a, literally a ghost with like you can see through the foot like yeah, it's it's like a magic magic is real I guess in, in this Marmaduke. universe yeah, and it's only available to the dog trainer and Chinese people and apparently the ch- and a Chinese dog. Yeah, later, like that's it. later on in the movie, which that'll go into the racism. A little sneak peek into yeah, that racism. Into that racism. Um, so but then, like, and that's the reason why Marmaduke wants to get trained. Is he's because like, he whoa, wants that to, was crazy. Yo, I want to learn how to kick people from far away. I think it's also that Marmaduke is like, you know what, I could be disciplined. You know, I, yeah. I think he's starting to be like, oh, this is nice because yeah. the dad starts treating him better. You know, and he's like, oh, this is how I get respect from, uh, you know, it goes through the mind of a dog being disciplined, like in real life. Yeah. Which is not something I want to watch a movie about. <laughs> Crate training the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I don't give a fuck, actually. <laughs> not going to lie. I don't think that's very yeah. interesting. Uh, if I did, I'd be a fucking dog trader. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You'd be, what is his name? Caesar Milan, right? Yeah. That's the dog trainer? Yeah. I, I think he's bad, though. I think he's not actually he probably a, a pretty very bad, good yeah. dog trainer. That's from what that's I've heard. Okay, that's beyond the word. I don't know specifics. You guys are going to tell me. You the figure it out. Yeah, you guys let you us You guys know. are very knowledgeable. I appreciate yes, it. Yes, and I appreciate it, too. Anyway, next up, Marmaduke. Well, that's what I'm knowledgeable about. Yeah, okay, Marmaduke. So- Marmaduke goes through the training, and then that's the... He goes to the fucking county. regional dog show. Yeah, he goes to regionals from Glee. Yeah. yeah. He goes to... And uh, regionals are not only from Glee, Josh. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Uh, but no, so Yeah, like, he goes to, like, the local dog show, and he does okay, and then... Uh, but also, this is, like, apparently the, the rich, fancy dog lives in this region, apparently. Yeah, I don't know why he's... Because he's... Is he American? No, he's from, um, he's, uh, he's not, I guess he's American. I think he's American. But, like, they really do play up, like, I think, um, I, I want to say Swedish. It's something like that. It's some European thing. I don't know. Thing. I have no idea. Maybe because, his owner's Swedish, but well, he's American? Well, because don't, they have that scene later on, right when the racism starts, where it's, um... <laughs> Uh, uh, what is it? Where they're all coming out of their own limousines and they make a point to yeah. like show their country's flags. I want to say I don't think they JK do that. Simmons for him. dog doesn't. Okay, never mind. I think it's just everybody else. Like now here, now in the third act, we're gonna do the really good thing that every movie does and introduce five, more, new, five characters. Much new characters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But no, okay. So yeah, I guess I guess the dog's American, but like he's also like rich and famous because he has a shampoo line because his. Dog character is, has a lot trait of hair. Is hair, and also his owners have hair. Yeah, they're like really good with hair. I think his owners are Swedish, and the dog is is, is American. Whatever, whatever. Yeah. I guess J.K. Simmons was like, I'm not speaking I'm not in gonna, a Swedish accent. I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna get canceled for racism <laughs> from the fucking Marmaduke movie. And sadly, there are four other people that were like, I'll get canceled for racism. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Put my oh, name on that God. shit. God, give okay. me an IMDb credit, please. Yeah, anything. I uh, just for exposure. <laughs> please, dear God. I need. I need to pay my rent with these exposure bucks, please. Anyway, no, so, so the so bad dog teach. It says to Marmaduke, Hey, should you eat all this food? 
food right before you go out. And Marmaduke is like, like a, a, a for craft real? Tent. Yeah, and Marmaduke just believes it for some yeah, reason because Marmaduke's fucking uh, stupid. Well, that's the whole point of the Marmaduke fucking comic books. Read your Marmaduke <laughs> lore, Josh. I don't need to, listen, listen. He's an idiot and he thinks he's people. Okay. That's the whole all right, point okay, but of, like, the sh- of the so, fucking thing. Okay, all right, okay, but like, okay, so, so. Uh, it's what, you know okay. what? It, it's your boss comes up to you and says, did you see the Marmaduke today? And you go, no. And then he shows you like a, 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 co- a single panel comic of Marmaduke trying to drive a truck. And he goes, he thinks he's people. And I'm like, that's really funny, <laughs> okay, but it's yeah. not funny. And then your boss gives you a raise. That's the beauty of Marmaduke. <laughs> okay, all right, fair. All, all right. right. Okay, so yeah, Marmaduke eats all the food in the tent. He does, and then, and then he then, takes a big poopy in the trophy. Yeah, because then they have their all their their walkouts, and then Marmaduke. Um, what is it? Before they do the walkout, they they have they they animate and stretch out Marmaduke to look like he's like full of food, right? He has the overextended, inflated vor yeah, belly. If you, yeah, if you have the inflation kink, you should watch. This yeah, movie. you should watch Marmaduke. That one you scene. will come like four yeah, times because. And also, like, I think that's another thing of, like, uh, what I love about how bad the animation is, is they literally just stretch out the texture. Yeah. And you can, like, almost see the pixels. Yeah. (laughs) Absolutely can see the pixels. So, yeah, and then, like, Marmaduke does, like, the sucking up thing, and then, like, during the walk, he fucking collapses and then runs to the toilet. Because he has to fart so bad. Yeah, it's it's a green, and then he farts out a green toxic smoke, which is also an easy thing you can do, but this movie didn't get. No, they didn't get it right. But then the clown was also there again so we did yeah, the, the sos, SOS clown was, this is the second time this is the second time and i think this is also the last time i don't remember no if it's were... not oh no yeah he's, yeah, he's in it four yeah, more fucking, times i swear I to god why. he's in the credits he's in the fucking credit okay yeah you're right they okay. love him yeah they love him so much uh, we love clown but um no so yeah we so love then clown. marmaduke gets disqualified because he shat in the trophy yeah because of course he did yeah and then the dog trainer's really upset and mean to him and is like <laughs> fuck you marmaduke you are a piece of shit i can't train you and so then, that story is over yeah we've we've had we've had very um very lynchian this, this movie <laughs> yeah like where we have a back and forth yeah so we've we've already crossed the threshold and then come back already yeah and then um the, oh there's the um there's a uh, the then they get a big fucking bill and it's like comical and like they do a star wars credit roll gag and then Marmaduke swims across the world? Because uh, the dog trainer said something like, your dog would have to do the impossible, like, go around the world for, to, me, to for train me to him train him again. again. So then Marmaduke is like, I'm so sorry for farting in that cup. I'm going to swim across the the, the, the world. entire world. And then, and you then have, he does. Yeah, and, like, they have the they have the map. The, the Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones map, yeah, map. where it's the, the yeah, uh, where it's like the red dotted line, and then yeah. they go to China, and it's the 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 wall, and then it's like, a montage, yeah, yeah, and like whatever, you know, and then it's dumb, um, and then he returns with like swim goggles and the snorkel on, yeah, which he's also he's snorkeling because he's a cartoon, yeah, you know, haha, yeah, <laughs> it's you know, returns back, and then there's. I think you pointed this out because I didn't see this the first time. Oh there's my god, the, I've been thinking about her. Yeah, there's every like every day. So he returns to the dog owner's house and like everyone's like has their like Marmaduke, we love Marmaduke flags. And there's, and there's, there's a bunch one of dogs extra too. that I can only describe as my sleep paralysis demon. Yeah, because like <laughs> there's like a because you know animation's really hard, guys. Uh, if you make a if you make a scene. You have to make a whole new scene for every cut you do in the movie. Like, I don't so they even just put in a fucking character model that wasn't there two seconds ago. Well, not even that. I think just like, I don't know what her vibe is. I don't know what is up with her, but she's this extremely wide old woman, I think. Maybe. I don't know. With deep set like dark eyes yeah. staring straight into my soul into the camera into the camera <laughs> jimming the camera a thing not that... moving a single yeah. inch and it's maybe the most horrifying thing i've ever seen and i've been thinking about it and dreaming about it legit every oh, day wait, since. Th- wasn't there um there was um i forgot about this because uh, this was a fucking there's a there's the little there's the teenage girl character in the family that um they they have like a scene where like she's embarrassed by Marmaduke at the school, but like not because Marmaduke's there because he f- shat in the toilet. Yeah, the kids are being bullied because their dog shat in a 
in a, in a toilet and then trophy. also drown the entire neighborhood with fart with fart yeah so like then also like there's a point where like there's like girl yeah. scouts or cheerleaders, cheerleaders on like stairs and one of them's t-posing yeah she's literally yeah t-posing. like she's t-posing and like and just and like shit. not moving at all while oh the other God. one talks um, I know I, I, I've touched on this a little bit. I think this is a, p- a part of the movie that the lip sync budget went dry. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's really bad. Because at some point they're saying like, um, I don't I, like w- the and then the mouth doesn't move. <laughs> like, or it's, like, or, or you it's know, like, um, just like, I love Marmaduke. And then their mouth like, is going a mile a fucking minute. And you're like, that's not what I love Marmaduke looks like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think this is part of the movie. I mean, it was visible before, but at this point it gets a lot worse. And I legit was like, okay, let's give this the benefit of the doubt. Maybe this was made for a different language. And I looked it up and no. I couldn't find <laughs> it anything was not. that it was said. Made for I can't America. find the budget for this movie. I can't find... There's w- nothing. The movie it's been was... Scrubbed from the uh, I think the movie was made in three different countries, but it's an American production company making it. So maybe they thought Netflix. they needed to make it for certain shots. I wonder if there in their was native language an then... attempt, yeah, to like have it be in different languages, but then all of them, I, they didn't label their shots, so they it, all got mixed up somehow. I don't it's know. It's not even like it's too early or it's too late. It just doesn't sync. It's not the right It's not words. the mouth movement. Yeah. So maybe the script got changed or something. Maybe, maybe. Honestly, I don't know. We don't know because there's no information. I, what, what what could they have said though that they had to change the script? I don't know, Josh. Three minutes before blah, the blah, movie. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Marmaduke, you're the best dog in the world. Blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> right? But like, yeah. What, like why? what is happening? What happened that they couldn't they couldn't go back? I I did Pete Davidson say something about nine eleven? <laughs> They just they got the wrong Marmaduke. Marmaduke saying, "You know, when my dad died in 9/11, everything and then they was... had to change it to I hate cats." <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? Oh man. Oh, God. Okay, but yeah. So the dog trainer reluctantly says, "Yeah, I'll if do I, the, I'll, do, I'll it. do the thing." And then he calls up his booty call from like the national dog. But like, it's trainers. also not a booty call. It's like a guy, a girl he likes and wants. Yeah, to he like date. genuinely likes her. Yeah, but basically, it's like he schmoozes her into getting Marmaduke into the national competition. Yeah, and this is one, and this is about the midway point, I think, of the movie, and this is where the main conflict finally begins. Finally, finally, yeah, it happens. Uh, so yeah, by now you should have met with the goddess. Usually, <laughs> yeah, there should have been or like we're getting a- close to meeting with the goddess, but we haven't gotten there yet. Uh, so I would like to hero's journey this. <laughs> Yeah, movie. yeah, just right. to try and see where we're at. Uh, so, at what page? Well, because like there wasn't even like it probably follows the hero's journey more than save the cat. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, maybe I don't know, but like, because uh, like, because save the cat is a to the page by the minute. Like what you're, see, what you're fucking supposed to do? Yeah. So and uh, I don't what. I highly doubt that the hero's night of the soul is supposed to happen 15 minutes before the end of the movie. I guess. Yeah. Maybe it is. I don't, I don't know. I Maybe don't know. that was more accurate just as a pulling a number from my ass. But like, I don't, yeah, yeah. But like, I don't know. Cause like I'm, I'm drawn. I'm cause I'm fucking autistic. I'm, yeah, you I'm gotta drawing. Go up yeah. And then you gotta come down. So, but like, yeah. Cause like you don't even ha- like the up is like, yeah, because it's like, nothing. what is the conflict? Is the problem? Yeah, is like and then the rising action was that he's a bad dog, and then it gets. But then he, he gets trained, trained to be a good dog, so and now then, he's a good dog. So then there's less. But then he but goes then up, he, and then he's a bad dog again. But then he but just then farts. He just farts again, and then it's like, well, okay, he's All coming right, down. But then down. The, he's untrainable. Then he loses the thing and so, so then he goes back up. up. So, but then he goes around the world, and then he's accepted again. Yeah. So he's kind of down but then there's maybe oh i, I mean the national competition when he loses that for oh no yeah fucking okay reason. yeah you're right okay um because uh, like it just doesn't make any sense that he would lose like twice yeah that's true yeah you're right yeah oh i forgot about the plot twist in this movie oh yeah. my god yeah we'll okay. get to that okay but yeah. like okay so okay we, we, so let's... next up is the racism there's a chihuahua who's from mexico who loves tacos and then there's like <laughs> Well, okay, we have to talk. Okay, can we talk about how I'm? I know how a hack writes because and Josh was calling this shit out like three seconds before, before it, it happened. happened. 
so they do the um they do like the uh um um which uh, josh to be fair there was a little chihuahua with the most racist mexican accent i've heard in years yes and there's a little there was a silver uh, platter and they were serving and it were, up and then i think anyone would have said that was a fucking taco yes okay but okay so uh here's okay so before okay before we even get to that scene there's the there's the uh, there's the walking out scene where they're on the limo yeah they're all getting out of their limos and, they, and, and then, then they, they have, get like you have the coming to smash like yeah they have like the fucking uh <laughs> this chihuahua, uh, chihuahua name joins is the pedro fight. and he's from mexico he's pedro he's from mexico Cool. And then there's this French dog, and who's there's sexy. a French sexy pink dog, and um, oh, 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 you know, loves croissants or poodle. something, right? Or was it a bag? I don't remember. <laughs> but like, oh uh, yeah. And then there was um, yeah. there's the Chinese dog. And then the was Chinese, Chinese dog. Or, it was it China or Japan? It was China. It was China. Okay, I just want to make sure. I, I, because like. Who comes I out and it plays I, like did, 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 yeah, like it literally well. does. But no, and then I was joking like um what he's is gonna it? have magical he's gonna powers. Have magical powers, right? That's and, oh, the fucking course he did. They're okay, yeah, because uh, here's how the racism progresses. It's yeah. it's through each competition there's the racist uh there's a nice l- little thing of racism, you yeah, know. Yeah. Uh the temptation one is uh, the ch- Chihuahua is tempted by tacos and just can't control himself. <laughs> he loves tacos <laughs> too much, and that and he's disqualified or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then there's like a talent competition to oh. support the racism to hips uh, theory. The uh, Mexican woman who owns the Chihuahua did have big ass hips. But yeah. the Chinese lady that owned the Chinese dog didn't did have not. Big. Okay, so yeah, okay, so that's, so that's fucking that's racist. That's also racist. Okay, cool. So yeah, so. Uh, that happens. Uh, does the does the French dog do anything racist? I don't. The remember. French dog is just there to be a sexual element for Marmaduke. <laughs> yeah, the, the the guy. Yeah, the yeah. prize. Yeah, and then she doesn't like the bad guy, which is J.K. Simmons. Yeah, and then there's um there's the English dog that's like James Bond. He has like a bulldog. Yeah, as a bulldog. I think there's a uh, there's English an bulldog. English bulldog. There's like another one, right? Um, isn't there another one? Probably. Is there a German one? No, I don't think so. I don't know what I've done a Holocaust joke. <laughs> but yeah, I, but I swear to God, there was like eight dogs or six dogs in this movie. I think it was just like four and then Marmaduke four and the Marmaduke. guy. Marmaduke and okay, all right then. So, so there was um, Mexican, M- Mexico, Chinese, China, um, French, France, and then England, English. And then Bad American guy and, and American. Swedish, I guess. Yeah, technically. I think that's what it was. Yeah. So then there's um uh what so yeah and then there's the there's the talent competition where the the Chinese dog has mystical powers and then like legitimately and listener I really want you to pay attention to what I'm about to say this Chinese dog participates in like a samurai fight yeah it's a samurai fight and then like there's um. Oh, he also has like powers like out of the competition too. I think he changes yeah. things. No, yeah, he's got telekinesis. Yeah, he he's has telekinesis. Yeah, he, like it's literally like, oh, what are you doing? Oh, we have a conflict, and then the Chinese dog comes in, and when the most chi- like absolutely racist Chinese accent goes, I'm going to fix this, and then raises a paw. And, like, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. It fixes everything. Yeah, fucking, I forgot. About, does that ha- that happens at the um. That happens when Marmaduke fucking dies, right? Multiple times, so. it yeah. Happens. But like, yeah, it, ha- it happens like a lot. A they lot. go back they to really that well a lot. Go hard on the Chinese dog. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and then there's um, ah, oh, what the fuck else was it? Okay, and then I don't, I don't think the British bulldog really had much else. I think he well, was yeah, like, we can't. It's the, we can't disprepare to the Queen. <laughs> yeah, they're white people. <laughs> they're crackers. Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. They're so Westerners. Um, what is it? Fucking um. Ah, uh, there's the point where the dog, the um, uh, what happened? Wait, okay, no, because there's a there's a point where like the trainer gets um injured. It's because the the pink gel dog, the Swedish dog. Oh yeah, he like cheats. Cheats, yeah, and causes Marmaduke puts, to like slip. Yeah, with like his pink uh shampoo. I yeah, think, he does. Is what it is, and then like Marmaduke still wins it, but then also like kills his trainer. Yeah, he literally like murders his murders trainer, trainer on accident. And then the next shot is him in the hospital, completely covered in bandages. Yeah, yeah. And then they're like, "Oh, he's disqualified because he doesn't have a trainer." And then the dad's finally like, "I'm gonna do it. I'm good. Our family, our whole, whole family is gonna, gonna train him." 
And then I really, I think I blacked out after that. I didn't. So uh, yeah, what happens? Um, so then, then that's the talent competition. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so th- the talent competition happens. I think it's um, the French. Do- the French dog is a seductress. Yeah, she's the, got that dog pussy. Yeah, the samurai thing happens with the Chinese dog. Yeah. I don't remember what happens with the the English dog. I think maybe there was a James Bond thing. I don't know. He was I wearing a suit. Probably. I, I yeah. don't fucking remember. Um, if I had to guess, the Chinese dog was wearing a sombrero at some point, or his trainer was. I don't know. The Chinese dog was wearing a sombrero. No, fuck the Mexican dog. No, the Mexican oh, dog was disqualified. Oh yeah, after the after the yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. I thought they had after he ate the taco. Yeah, after he ate the taco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are we saying? I don't no, know. Okay, so but then yeah, and then Marmaduke has like a western thing with the kid. Yeah, cuz that's a thing from the beginning of the movie where they would play uh cowboy. cowboys. Yeah, and then and also they would the fight the cat. Yeah, and then um there's also Oh yeah, the cat show. There's a cat whatever. Uh my the, eye is twitching right yeah, now. Yeah, so Oh, and then the um uh the the Swedish dog does like a hypnosis thing. Where yes. he literally he, he does like he a has like a DJ fuck. yeah and he makes everyone scratch themselves like dogs and like everyone has the same exact character move it like literally copied and pasted yeah because they're not each, gonna do multiple onto each character model yeah no it's not like just you do ten of those and then you you know copy and paste them you could <laughs> you could you would get the same critique from some fucking asshole but I guess well, it's like the, you want the critique from every asshole I well, guess that, the thing is like I'm willing to you could make a fucking particle system with different like people and different movements and be and have it Josh, be randomized do you know how much math that takes not a lot not more than I know <laughs> and I'm the Mar- the Marmaduke animator yeah. <laughs> okay all right. Okay, but like no. So yeah, like literally, they're all copied, and then he gets like tens because he's cheating, and yeah. like because it's a uh, the Swedish guy. They wear like they wear like sailor uniforms, right? Like they have a white and blue striped thing, and then the French trainer has a white and black one, right? Am I wrong about that? God, I don't remember. I don't remember. Probably. I don't fucking I'll say care. Okay. But like, Who yeah, they, yeah. Then they they. Uh, yeah, go fucking check. Go look at. Go don't, check, don't listener. watch this movie. Yeah, go ahead, watch that whole movie don't, just to check I, or what watch Josh it just and said. Let, and let Netflix make a sequel. <laughs> But Why no. are we even trying to be accurate about this movie? I, 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 Who's I, gonna I, fucking watch it? I need I need to be accurate for me for my saneness. So okay, there's there's <sighs> good um, people, man. But yeah, so then they have the thing, and then the 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 J.K. Simmons wins because he hypnotized everyone. He's a fucking cheater, pumpkin eater. And then something I don't remember what exactly happens that makes like the. Oh, there was like a diving. I think was the English guy dive. Was that maybe what it was? that's probably because there was like a big fucking chair in the middle of everything. That and be, then that's pretty funny. Then considering like, do you remember that one year of British TV where they just had like a diving show? Maybe is that the is that a reference <laughs> they're trying to make in the Barbatu uh, movie? Uh, yeah, like that was like from okay. 2014. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Where like the British diving maybe, team maybe and in the movie. Olympics did really good, and then they made like a whole TV show like it was Bake Off. Maybe and this it, like, movie was made in 2014. Was a sensation. But no, it couldn't have been because then JK said, unless they had voice no. actors and then they just replaced it. It, it. would have been a crazy weird <laughs> it reference. Been a weird, yeah. Yeah. So okay, but then okay, so then like a chair. Just fucking falls on Marmaduke and he dies for like three minutes. Yeah, then everybody's like, oh my god, Marmaduke is fucking dead. Yeah, and then the clown shows back up. And it's like, SOS, Marmaduke's dead. Yeah, or whatever. Doesn't And then like, I don't, was it, I don't remember what makes Marmaduke wake up. Love. I think it was a tear. Yeah, it was like one of the, someone, someone cried on Marmaduke. Yeah, it was like, um, it, I mean, you're not going to know this, Josh, because you're not a Pokemon fan, but in the, the Pokemon movie where there's the, it's about Cerebi, mm-hmm. the legendary, uh, forest guardian Pokemon, uh, there's a point where Cerebi fucking dies at the end of that movie. And uh, Ash Ketchum is holding Cerebi in his arms, crying, weeping tears, and trying to force berries into uh, Cerebi's mouth. Jesus Christ. It's fucking amazing. And it's amazing animation. Also. Just (laughs) just throw that in there. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, uh, exactly that happens with Marmaduke. I actually kind of remember a different... It's not the same thing. It's not where, like, someone cries. But the closest thing I can relate it to is... 
in the SpongeBob movie. Yes, literally. Where that. they dry up, but then they have that last tear, and it goes into the electrical thing, and then it rains, and then they're alive again. Yeah, it's kind of like that. It's kind of like that, but I mean, it's not as good because it's not no, the fucking SpongeBob movie, it, a movie made in fucking 05. Yeah. <laughs> not 2022. It's, yeah, or like the fucking <laughs> 90s with the Pokemon it, yeah, movie. Yeah, still so, better. Yeah, so, okay, so then uh, he, he gets the tear and wakes up. And um, I, I think at that point it's revealed the pl- the big plot twist of the movie. Yeah, is one of the the Swedish brothers. I'm just gonna keep calling. I don't give a shit if they're not Swedish. The Swedish brothers, uh, blonde hair, blue eyed, uh, arm, uh, uh, dressed race, up like a woman to be one of the judges and yeah. cheat. And then they get caught, and then they're and then all everyone arrested. goes ew, ew at the man dressing up like yeah, the lady. So there's also transphobia. Yeah, in this it's movie, pretty which transphobic. Is pretty fucking epic. Just gotta check off all the boxes. It's of, really cool and awesome. And and then um uh uh, uh then Marmaduke wins by default. I, no wait no Marmaduke doesn't win, doesn't he? He's still. I don't think he won. Yeah. Yeah, it went to the it went to the Chinese dog, didn't it? It did. Yeah, it did. So Marmaduke doesn't even fucking win. I think in his own movie. I think. Well, I think they were like, listen, we did so much racism to Chinese people. We have week. to. Yeah. We gotta. We give have it. to. Yeah. We have to give them a win <laughs> in give them one on our win. own terms. You yeah. Know? We can't just respect them. <laughs> Give them we a have fake to make award. fun of them and then give them the win so that way we can get away with making fun of them. It's the equivalent it, of like a white guy being like, ha ha, black people, and then turn around and be like, nah, never mind. I love black people. You know, it's like you didn't do anything. Yeah, you didn't. Yeah. You're so, still a piece of shit. You still fucking suck. But yeah, so then yeah. there's, um, uh, uh, then there's. Um, How are we going to talk about Saturday Morning All Stars? <laughs> yeah, hits? well, that's a better show. It is because okay, I, I guess that's the comparison. Uh, okay, we we still need to finish Marmaduke. We're not done. Marmaduke doesn't fucking die, and he doesn't win the competition, and then and everybody then loves him home. still. Yeah, they uh, value him more. Yeah, and then that's it. That's but the end of the like fucking an movie. Actually... And then there's the clown after the credits. That's yeah. It. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. So that that happens, and then the movie ends. Whatever. Um, and they're all like, thank God. And re- then you realize, <laughs> Jesus Christ, our yeah, Lord and Savior. They literally are like, <laughs> no, yeah, I, we oh. have to be this because God put us here. And then you're like, wait, what? And then you flash back to an earlier scene and you realize there's a big fucking church in the background. And you're like, oh, this oh, whole movie yeah. is Christian. Yeah. Of fucking course it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, which I think is really funny because do you think this is going to get on the Bible flicks or is there too much farts? I, you know, I think there's gr- too much farts. I, I, I think there's too many farts. I think that one scene would have to be cut out. So, like, which would it, actually make this a better movie? Who is this movie for? Okay, that, okay, that's what I want to talk about because yeah. this the, it's not attention grabbing enough to attract to keep kids entertained for more than five minutes yeah because every joke is like every joke is bad <laughs> Josh, there's not give me a setup go ahead um why did the chicken cross the road i don't <laughs> to get to the other side you're not wrong. Yeah, that's no, how bad the pacing is. Yeah, it's um okay. Yeah, because okay, so we, that's why we have to. So uh, we've explained the plot. Yeah, we. Ha- I I want to because my writer brain needs yeah. to talk about how you're supposed to write anything and literally anything uh, you don't you don't make a thirty minute short and then a sixty minute short and then smash them together and call it a ninety call it an even call it an even tight ninety yeah. Uh, you uh, uh, uh it's a sixty. Uh, is sixty minutes a short? It's thirty minutes a short. Thirty minutes, yeah, thirty minutes for sure is a short. I think anything under forty-five minutes is considered a short. But like feature length is like one twenty minimum, I think. Okay, so then what's a sixty? Um, a TV pilot. <laughs> right. So you you make a short and then the the TV pilot. But like, okay, so uh, uh, uh um, that sounds more plausible. Is like, oh. Let's just put them together. There should be. This makes more sense as three separate TV show episodes. Yeah, but there's no real. But there's not like there's no concrete ending and beginning for each of them either. Like if you put them on yeah. in like thirty minutes and in increments, the even then the story is bad. <laughs> no, yeah, because yeah. like okay, so like you start okay, so you you have to establish everything within five pages of your script but in this movie i think 
30, 40 percent of your movies established in the first five pages. It's like a burger. Yeah. How would you cut it into thirds? I don't know because there really isn't. Well, because like, <sighs> well, because like that's how I feel. Like I think they had a some Netflix was like, make me a burger, and they were like, okay, how do we do this? And then they're like, oh, well, we'll just attack it a third at a time, is what somebody said. Yeah. And then they were like, okay, how do I make a burger a third at a time? Instead of doing it in like a pie chart way, they were like, all right, I'll make the first third of the burger. Yeah, and then I'll make then, the middle third of the burger and then I'll do the half of the burger and then somebody else goes no you need to have the bottom bun and then the meat the meat and then the top bun yeah and they were like fuck you you can suck my fucking dick yeah that's I'm gonna that make actually this, is kind of how this is yeah. I'm gonna load this burger horizontally on my computer screen in real life <laughs> And I'm, I'm gonna, gonna 40D make it print it <laughs> way more harder on myself. Yeah, because like so, I, I, I <sighs> they're just following convention. It's gonna start with meat, and it's gonna go into bread, and then it'll have sauce, and then we'll have lettuce, and then we'll yeah. have onions, and then we'll have meat again, and <laughs> yeah. then it'll be bread. Yeah. So then, yeah. So that's what's weird is like there's no because I'm trying. I'm really trying hard. <laughs> it's just wrong. It's just it's wrong. not even wrong it's, in yeah. a beautiful way. It's yeah, just it's, wrong. it's just flat out wrong. Yeah. Like I mean, I don't know. I was I was watching ironically this video on um how like the um the hero's journey is kind of bullshit. bullshit. I saw that on your feed. Yeah, and I I, I kind of get it because it is very it is a Western way of looking at how and it's stories super are made. old and it's super old. I think there are better ways now that we've we've turned that into not being a racist sexist fucking thing but well, like i'm like i'm trying to think of like really good exa- the good examples of the hero's journey that i were taught are harry potter transphobic yeah um fucking uh i know star wars, uh, star wars is wars, like the boring. main one Bo- yeah boring as fuck um and uh and that's just my opinion if you get uh, upset at me i don't want to hear it yeah but like there's um i think someone's lord of the rings i think like the spongebob movie also technically is like a glowing absolutely yeah 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 and like i mean because like the thing is like you know okay you have the hero's journey and then like yeah you have more modern things like the more simplified Harmon circle you know which i think is a better way of doing it i think it cuts out a lot of the bullshit well i think it could be simplified but i think his whole point also was that there are uh, story circles within story circles yeah and i like i get that that I think makes total sense yeah, yeah that's but, how you write a tv show yeah and that's how you have to like glue people to your fucking yeah the screen so yeah so what is it fucking um ah uh, what the fuck am i thinking there's no, that's not that's there's not here no structure to this there's no like i i because like you you have um the the threshold should be Marmaduke starts training and is bad at it and should be the main plot is him becoming good. And that is what happens, but it happens in five minutes. That yeah, it that that five minutes should have been the stretched out movie. Like I could even see yeah. like doing it in a way where Marmaduke somehow wins or is accepted in that regional one. Yeah. On like a technicality, so he gets a second chance to go here. Yeah, and then he's like plagued with it the thought be of, a random, am I good, am I bad? Yeah, it should be is a, dog? A, a random ex machina character that's also a romantic interest that's introduced 40 minutes in for the main trainer. Yeah, so there's like a level and of And they shouldn't waste five minutes on a world journey for gags of Marmaduke running on the Great Wall of China? Yeah. That's the I, thing. I think the biggest problem with this movie is that it should have never been made. <laughs> because, because, and I literally mean that actually. I don't mean it as just like a dig, like a fun dig. Yeah. The source material is so devoid of, the point, the point of the source material is that it does not have a fucking story. It is Marmaduke yeah. doing its thing. It's, that's it there's no fucking plot point to it it's a comic strip of a dumbass dog and there's not even like the text is Marmaduke 
Yeah. That's the text. Yeah, or the yeah, yell Marmaduke at the end of it. Yeah. That's why it ran so long. It's beauty and its simplicity. So you don't need to add this whole big ass fucking yeah, thing. Yeah, you know, it's not like it kind of reminds me of like um it's, It should have been 30 minutes of Marmaduke getting into silly shit on a white background. 2D animation. Yeah, no, it should have been. That's right. Because it's never going to be a good story because it's a bad comic strip. Yeah, like, I mean, there's... I, it it, it kind of reminds me of, like, doing the Emoji movie after the Lego movie. Yeah. Because I know that the, the Peanuts is kind of having a revival right now. Oh, God. Because they have the Snoopy show on Apple Plus, right? And they have, like, the... I don't know about that. Is it good? I, 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 I don't know. I don't think it matters too much because it, we because uh, like fucking to a lot of people it's gonna well, matter. Yeah, it does matter, but like because but like that's the thing where it's like the Lego movie was a try. It worked miraculously because they had good people on it. And peanuts you know how many is piece of shit. Jazz musicians <laughs> love peanuts. How many? Every single one. They all love. They all love the Charlie Brown. Meaning that every jazz musician is a piece of shit and also loves peanuts. They. F- fucking love that shit yeah so okay that's my point is, yeah. is that okay the lego movie got lucky made struck out made gold because they had good people behind it peanuts is tried and true because they've it's, it's just a part of american culture with like the fucking great people pumpkin fucking love it yes so yeah. other studios were like oh lego movie worked let's do the emoji movie and yeah. that was a piece of shit oh peanuts is working again let's do a marmaduke comic it's kind of or like doing a Dilbert movie, which I think they made a Dilbert movie. Yeah, I think they did. They've probably made that. That's what that is. I think. Well, I think you can more easily ascribe Marmaduke to Garfield. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, where Garfield had at least Garfield is also a comic where nothing happens. Really, more stuff happens in Garfield than Marmaduke. Yeah, and then they tried to make the Garfield movies, and there's also been TV shows of. Uh, Garfield, and they're also bad, but they've come into this like cult, like teens think it's funny, yeah, to love Mar- uh, uh, Garfield. So Marmaduke is trying to do the same thing, but th- that's the difference is that Garfield was made sincerely, yeah. And if that's the end, if it's if Marmaduke was made insincerely to be a meme, and also children love Garfield, like Garfield, yeah, Garfield is, is fucking, well loved. Yeah, I love yeah, Garfield. Who doesn't love Garfield? Right, it's, it's Mondays. He's a silly guy. Marmaduke has no personality or character. Yeah. That I don't even to know me when... proves my point. It's like Marmaduke doesn't do shit. He's just a dog. Yeah, you just made Dog the movie mm-hmm. with fucking Pete Davidson <laughs> yeah. and J.K. Simmons. Yeah, and one of the guys from Anchorman. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, I mean, you know, I think a good Marmaduke movie, a quote-unquote good Marmaduke movie, would be bad. Yeah. Because what's going to happen? Nothing. So this is the best Marmaduke movie that <laughs> that we have. Apparently there's a live-action Marmaduke movie with yeah, Owen Wilson is. in it. It's probably really bad. It's probably pretty bad, yeah. I want, It's probably better than this. I, I mean, that's a low bar. <laughs> <laughs> that's the lowest bar you could have. Is this better than, like, the live action dog movies of yesteryear where they go of like like beethoven the dog um is it better or worse is that what's the or just is yeah is it better or worse did i i mean do you remember beethoven the dog movies no i don't whoa no wild i i think did that's they, probably did they, did they have an actual dog in it yeah it, was it live action yeah oh then they're better yeah that, that's that's not even a i don't have to watch them then it was basically just like they, they at least had a, a cute fucking dog they yeah. didn't have a monstrosity you definitely like there were definitely like three different types of that dog and one of them died for sure <laughs> yeah but you know like he was would run around and he would and then they would take fo- uh scenes of him where he's like eating paper or something and then the dad would be like what the fuck you know like is yeah. this better or worse than that uh, uh, well this movie makes me want to barf visually at least there's at least there's not an uncanny valley yeah okay 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 live action everybody's live action except for the dog the dog is cgi that's not that doesn't no that's uh mm. 
I think only because I think it would still be better because of how fucking bad the character design is in the Marduk. Yeah, like, it literally. Yeah, remember, actually. remember fucking the, the the all their legs, their pointy fucking legs, yeah, and their ar- pointy arms. The trainer's legs were really really small and tall. It was it's the character design literally is just thin and tall. Short well, and actually, fat. we know that like a movie with a CGI dog would be better than because this. of Scooby Doo. Yeah, yeah. Like that's that's the and yeah. that's I think the same type of dog as Marmaduke. Also, Scooby Doo is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so I think so. It yeah. would be better technically. Wow, they really dropped the ball on this one. But also, the writing for the Scooby Doo movies were great because the writers were on like cocaine the whole time. So you know, that is true. Yeah. So that's yeah. Like, there's that whole yeah. B-plot that I didn't even know about until, like, recently, because it got cut out, that, like, Fred is gay. Like, they literally, like, acknowledge it, and by the end of the movie, he gets gayer? Hell yeah. I didn't even know that, but that's in the movie, because there's, like, one scene where, like, Fred is trying to get Daphne to go fuck him, and then she's like, no, because you can't get it up, and you don't even fuck girls. <laughs> and he was like fuck you and then you know by the end of the movie he wears an ascot and like oh yeah starts eyeing men more i didn't even realize that that when i watched it as a child jesus isn't that crazy (laughs) it's fucking insane i love it god i don't know what the fuck we were saying before that i don't know i don't know uh don't watch the marvel duke movie don't everybody go watch saturday morning all-star hits with kyle mooney Uh, can we okay we need to talk about that one i can't talk about the entire plot of it though well no i i I don't want to spoil it because that's actually a good show yeah it's actually really good i want to talk about uh, did did marmaduke get an actual marketing budget i don't think so i don't don't know we how do we know i because like fucking i don't know i feel like they're probably (laughs) banking on the name marmaduke yeah so that's the weird thing is like um i'm gonna gonna pick my nose on camera fuck you i've Um, done it before yeah so there's um uh, what is it called uh i think because like there's a there's the danny gonzalez video on marmaduke i haven't heard a single thing about saturday morning all-star hits yeah no we have not heard a damn uh, thing we, about it. We were scrolling through Netflix for like 30 minutes. Because I, th- I think Netflix is fun. I think it's fun to look for stuff on Netflix. I, my eyes roll over sometimes like when there's too many choices. I know. That's why I do it is to annoy you. Thank you. You're welcome. But like no, So like there's um, uh, what is it? What the fuck is it called? Um, Yeah. So we were just scrolling through Netflix for 30 minutes. We watched seven minutes of Paradise PD. Paradise as PD. A, yeah. As a bit. And I couldn't watch more than those seven minutes because I was going to fucking kill myself. Yeah, that show is literally just like balls, balls, balls. Yeah, yeah balls. there's a in that show. There's like a like thirty fifty seconds of uh the kid the kid shooting his dad in the testicles with and a gun. Tom Kenny, the fucking voice of SpongeBob. Yeah. Uh, and ap- apparently SpongeBob doesn't pay out that well. Yeah, apparently Tom Kenny needs to eat. He needs to fucking eat. So he's. <laughs> He's on Paradise PD as a uh, as the police chief with no balls, and he keeps referencing that, How and everyone else references that. Don't watch that show either. Pretty bad. Um, and then we came across this sh- this gem, weird little fucking show that, that no makes one, me smile. Th- that man. I think we are the only two people <laughs> who have ever that, seen it. This show came out in December. 2021. July. <laughs> Nobody's I've spoken a goddamn word show. about it. And the reason why no one's ever heard of the show is the same fucking reason the best sketches on SNL are canceled is yep. because it's made by fucking Kyle Mooney. Yeah. Um, and also one of the guys from uh Epic Rap Battles <laughs> yeah. of History and also Apparently someone that worked on Bob's Burgers, too? <laughs> makes total sense, This bro. is like a weird trinity of, like... Can I explain what it is? Yeah, yeah, you can. So basically it's like an alternate uh, universe of Saturday morning cartoons. Uh, Back in the 80s and 90s, yeah. Where, yeah, or 90s, 2000s era, because I really resonate a lot with it, and I watched cartoons as a kid in the 2000s. But, like, it was... it. <laughs> it's introduced by... Two twin brothers, both played by Kyle Mooney. Yeah. And they go into these fucking weird ass cartoons 
that are hilarious. <laughs> like adult, like weirdly violent, weirdly <laughs> like. They're definitely like. It's it's like Saturday morning cartoons for adults. Yeah, in yeah. a universe where it's for kids. Yes, and it's like it's like Portlandia. It's like fucking. Um, I'm trying to think of the uh, thing. Uh, I think you should leave. I think it's you know it's very much yeah. that, but then it also has like a Mister Show esque like keeping the. There's a plot line, plot line going between all the shows at the same time with all the fucking... With multiple characters that Kyle Mooney plays. Yeah, because Kyle Mooney plays uh, most of the leads in the shows, yeah. like the, the cartoon shows. Paul Rudd is one of the leads in... <laughs> Fucking Ant Man is yeah. one of the, is uh is Ant Man is in it. Fucking um uh Kyle Mooney's uh, other half, what's his name from SNL? Oh, Beck Bennett. Beck yeah, Bennett. he's in it. He's a, he's a, voice uh, a bunch in of it. like really famous like <laughs> I think <laughs> Stimpy. Nathan in Fielder's in it for one episode. <laughs> He barely has a speaking part. <laughs> he doesn't. <laughs> and even his speaking part, I didn't realize it was him. Yeah, he does a really good voice for it, actually. Yeah, it's actually really good. Like, there's some... Um, it's a... It, what, how do I... Oh, um, Dylan Sprouse is in it? Yeah, Dylan fucking... He from doesn't Riverdale. Even have, he doesn't know. That's, oh, that's Cole, Cole Sprouse. Sprouse. Yeah, Dylan Sprouse is in this one. Dylan Sprouse is the one I look like. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't think I look like him now that I got fat, but I, I when I was skinny, I used to look like Dylan Sprouse, and men would tell me I looked like it. Anyway, uh, <laughs> fucking, yeah, he's in it. He doesn't have really have a speaking role. He's just a guy who gets yeah. murdered. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Which is not a spoiler because it's in the trailer. Yeah, it is actually, yeah. There's yeah. a, uh, what is it? Uh, the trailer doesn't, the, the, it's interesting, the Netflix preview doesn't do a good job no. for the show because it's just one of the clips from the show. But the actual trailer for the show is so fucking funny because it cuts to... The best cartoon, my favorite cartoon that I'm sad doesn't, I can't watch oh, yeah, anymore. It's, um, Fucking uh, Randy. Randy, who's like a dinosaur that goes to college. <laughs> well, and no, I don't want to say that much. The dinosaur, so his backstory is that he's a dinosaur that was on like a spaceship that like dropped to Earth. And then a bunch of kids found him and took him in like he was E.T. But then he just ended up being a cool skater dude guy. Yeah. And his girlfriend is a firefighter. But there's a scene where he's standing in front of a train who's coming for him, and he looks into the train and says, "I wish I, I, w- <laughs> I, wish I, I was, was extinct." extinct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's the moment I was oh. like sold. You know, it really was a moment where I think we both were like, and "I'm speaking for you," but I'm gonna say yeah. it. Where we both were like, "Oh my god, I love cartoons. <laughs> I love cartoons." Yeah. So like, I, this show is like, um. Ah, it's beautiful. It really is great. It's, um, I, 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 it's, re- it's beautifully constructed. I don't know how yeah. to describe it. I think it's, I don't know if it's just because we watched this, not after Marmaduke, but in a post Marmaduke world. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> I think it's, um, what is it? As someone who's been like, you know, we, we watch, we're watching the rehearsal now, you know, we watched, oh, yeah. um, how to with John Wilson. Like, yeah. It really is that nice, absurdist, but also I totally believe this could be real. For sure, yeah. Yeah, and then they also have like, um, because like the show is basically, it's meant to be like a, a Saturday morning programming block, so yeah. it also includes like commercials, but also like weirdly edited like home footage, which I think is interesting. Yeah, because they're all on tapes, I think. Yeah, they're That's all the it's labeled as tapes, yeah. So somebody's, I guess, taping over home footage. To tape the Saturday morning cartoons, yeah, yeah. it's actually really funny. I remember one commercial is uh, it's a diet. Uh, oh, maybe it's stripe. the maybe it's the little girl who does the taping. Oh yeah, at the end. Oh, that's uh, that's Which not is so a much spoiler. Of a spoiler. But, but uh, yeah, yeah. The, like there's a there's a plot point where like yeah, the, like a little the, girl says that she tapes all of the Saturday morning cartoons. So maybe that's what it is. Yeah. So that's maybe like the that's, meta. Huh, of it. Interesting. But like yeah. there's I remember there's one commercial that I think we both laughed at a little bit too much <laughs> was the diet uh, stripe. Oh yeah, it was like half like the can, half the calories, <laughs> half the calories. And she and they puts show it up. like actually the yeah because <laughs> it was just perfect timing. Yeah. <laughs> diet, tri- diet stripe half the half the calories half the can and immediately the model is drinking like yeah. a cut in half can of coke <laughs> it's so uh, and funny there's some, yeah, oh there's or like, what was it rude cubes 
Oh yeah, Rude Cubes. It just it's like if Steve Zaragoza's um uh fake uh fake uh, commercials from SourceFed, which is a blast from the past for you young listeners. You probably don't know. Yeah. Uh uh, uh Swensons or Stensons or something. Steve Zaragoza on SourceFed used to do this like this SourceFed video is sponsored by Swenson's uh wet wipes for your horse. Get them. Yeah. <laughs> and would just say like weird shit off the top yeah. of his head. And uh god man, fucking um I I <sighs> or just like, you know, yeah. half a sweater for when you're only a little cold. Like something yeah, exactly. funny yeah, like that. Yeah, like something like that, yeah. And it just sound it's like that but yeah. like constantly for the entire series. Yeah, like every episode has at least one of those. And like I it's so it's it's fascinating that this show that's really I wouldn't. I is it experimental? I guess it is. It's it's a yeah. It's, I think so. I, it's an experimental show, but it has more of a through line, a plot line, uh, parallel plot lines that work together. Quality, quality. Like, there's like, like a Care Bears rip off. There's a fucking Care Bears. Um, <sighs> I guess the dinosaur is close to like I I. I I want to. Oh, there's the. Oh, there's Strongamols. <laughs> Strongamols, which, which becomes is like the He-Man. most important. Yeah, yeah. one <laughs> becomes the most important one. For, I don't want to spoil too much, but like, yeah. So, uh, there's um, um, fucking. Oh, uh, there's uh, Doctor uh, Duck, which I think doesn't show up, but it's supposed to it's be like, like a commercial. Yeah. Well, it's um, it's supposed to be a rip off of um the the. I think Ducktales, right? Ducktales, yeah. Because yeah. like, there's um, there's a plot point in this show that mimics like the not dare, but like the like. Mothers against television or yeah, like television. swearing on yeah. TV, but it's not like actual swearing. It's it's, <laughs> it's like the it's the phrase "shut up." Yeah, and then they say <laughs> "s up." <laughs> yeah. Oh, he said the uh, "su" words. Yeah. yeah. Oh God, it's really funny, and it's it's interesting because like it really uh, like there's a there's a lot that goes on in this show. There's a lot. It's a very different show from episode one to episode eight, or I guess tape one to tape eight. Yeah, it's really it really does a lot to like build this universe and like before this show i think the only show that i've ever seen do this where like they have like a whole ridiculous concept going on for the entire show and then it ends in a death is community because that's how community would bring up the concept of death usually yeah which is like have a law and order themed episode or a true crime themed episode and then by the end of it there would be the dramatic the joke would be the ridiculous dramatic cliffhangers from law and order yeah where starburns dies, in a, dies meth lab. in a meth lab explosion <laughs> and, and the it trunk fades of to black solemnly <laughs> yeah. and, and then that's exactly what happens on this show but it's so fucking funny because there's this like brightly colored it's like neon colored fucking like yeah, perfect like 90s fucking you know shit Yeah, because like the the way they shoot it like this is actually like a good like um uh, uh, usage of the form where they like they do like the cut to black and white for like and then like they also lower the frame rate a little bit yeah, you know yeah and it's like oh man all I, the effects I love are it. fucking spot on too. dude I, I I was I was watching it and I was genuinely trying to figure out how the fuck they made Kyle Mooney have three of him on the screen yeah. seamlessly absolutely seamlessly that was like I was like dude did they deep fake this did they yeah. like I don't know. But like, I mean, my my money is like they probably just had a blank mat or whatever. But probably but like, it, it works so like it works too well. Yeah, like I straight up forgot that Kyle Mooney was like Kyle Mooney in some I of those scenes. I was wondering. I was trying to figure out like that's not him. Both of him, right? They look exactly the same, but that's not. That's a different actor, right? Yeah, but no, it was him. It was him. Yeah, well, which is interesting because like that's um I I want to say this show if it was made in twenty twenty one this is definitely a product of COVID. Where it's yeah. like you couldn't have that many people, but I think also like it's it's just it works. It works so show. well, yeah. yeah. It just works. I don't know, fucking. Uh, I, I guess I wanted to bring that up because like no one has talked about the show. No, not even a single person that I've seen that I've seen either. Yeah, yeah. And I wanted to bring light to it because it's such a good fucking show. It's a great show, man. And I, why is everyone? It. Why did why did why did Danny fucking Gonzalez make a video on on Marmaduke and not? Saturday Something morning nice. all star hits. So I don't know. I wanted to bring it up, I guess, in tandem with that. Something that's awful and then something that's great, you know? God, I hope it gets another season. Honestly. I would love another season. Whole new world, whole new fucking I don't even know how the fuck they would do it. Bro, they didn't even find um Lottie's body. Yeah, they didn't. Oh, that's a spoiler. 
It, not really. Spoiler. That's <laughs> not really. <laughs> they didn't even find her. I'm like, yeah. where the fuck is she? That's true. Yeah. It was such a cliffhanger. But then it's also like, I guess we're just not going to know. Like real life when people fucking die. <laughs> Sometimes you just don't you just find fucking, out. You just die, dude. <sighs> God, that's a good. Go watch it. It's please. so good. I need another season. <laughs> I want to be fucking extinct. Kyle, it's I so be extinct funny. Is such a good fucking line. Oh my god. Oh my god. Fuck. That was and I love a uh, Kyle Mooney's sound. Uh, this will be the last thing I say on it. Yeah. Because uh, we're all we're an hour and fifteen in. Uh, fucking um uh 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 uh, uh they're, they're, the I love Kyle Mooney's pop star character so much with the oh yeah the fucking flannel that's also like tied up underneath him yes yeah the that's skater like, boy oh the skater guy. boy with like the the um curtain bang like not curtain bangs but like almost bowl cut like, sure, like yeah straight black hair looks like Dean from Gilmore Girls oh yeah yeah and yeah. then he also does I, I just remembered he does the uh, the old uh, stand up guy yes he does you're right which I think little is my Bruce. favorite little Bruce is probably my favorite one <laughs> just because was... it's the only one it's one episode which means to me that. it got fucking canned in the yeah. universe but uh, no oh. it's such a oh god God, it's so good. Have you been saying to yourself, like, that is not Zuzzy's ass? Because <laughs> I have ass. been. I haven't been yet, but that might be a, a, <laughs> a term that comes in, in the reg, you know? I'm going to be at work tomorrow reading emails from guests where they're like, I took a shit in your pool. And I'm going to be like, that's not very Zuzzy's ass of you. <laughs> Fuck, dude. That's what this TV show has done to me in like eight episodes. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tight eight. Tight eight. Hey, 23. <laughs> All right. Now's the time where I have to go read a wolf story because a, a oh, God. listener asked for it. I have to go find one. Okay. So welcome to the segment of Sarah reading shitty Wattpad stories. I mean, I don't know if that we don't know if they're shitty yet. Well, you should go in with <laughs> an open you, mind. Why are you saying them off the bat that you're the one that implied the idea that they would be shitty? Right. I'm correcting myself. Maybe they're not so okay, shitty. Okay. All right. Good. Because we yeah. don't know. I'm reading wolf wattpad stories okay off of the wattpad app that i had to fucking download onto okay. my goddamn phone because i love you listener i don't know was it a was it a coffee that said that i don't remember someone suggested that we do this because they love when we did the alpha wolf yeah uh, uh sigma wolf shit <laughs> which was an ad i found on facebook so, yeah, so now, now i have to actually find these and i don't know where they're from i so, think they're from wattpad that okay. one was probably a published one. Yeah, we should find a published book. So and anyway, this is number one in Wolf. This is the first. Okay, so if you go on a lot of the top, all right, of Wolf. Okay, what's what's the title? Uh, rejected me. Period. Big mistake. Okay. Okay. That's that's what that's it not, is. That's too. Um, are those? Is that are those both in proper sentences? I, I like that. I, I don't give a shit. But like, <laughs> this has been viewed. 36.9 thousand times. Okay, all right. This is a little... And it's been starred 1,000 times. Okay. So uh, it's not a, it's not a little guy. Yeah, true. This is I a will say, popular. for the record, do not harass any of yeah, these. Yeah, don't do that. Don't fucking snitch. Which is, I'm like, maybe it's good if maybe so good, many yeah. people have read it. Yeah, so that's true. We don't know. Maybe it's good. But I'm going to read the first... This is the first chapter of Rejected Me Big Mistake, all right? Okay, I mean... I feel like that's like a weirdly... Maybe I'm judging a little bit. I feel like it's kind of a weird title, but I don't know. I, it doesn't make me... I don't know what it's about. Like, I guess you get rejected and it's a problem, but like... Rejected from... Rejected me, big mistake. Yeah. That's what it is. Are you going to kill the person that you We fucking... don't know. We're right, going to okay, find out. Right, That's okay, what the story right, is. Okay, yes. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. All I right, am not right. reading the story. Okay. Sorry. Sorry about... So... I'm Alicia Cara Blaine. For now, I go by Alicia. I'm 16 years old. I'm medium height with a bob of brown hair. I'm not fat. But since I don't want to stand out, I wear big sweatshirts and jeans. I could lose a little weight, but I don't particularly care. I love all the information that we have right off the bat. 
And I couldn't even hold it in. <laughs> you just said you just said the word so and looked at me. And I'm like, has that's the, any? That's, that's the, the opening first, word. That's the first sentence. So, I, 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 I don't. I, I. I uh, Okay, so okay, I, I used to write, right? I used to write. No, we're not doing this. We I'm have to, just yeah, reading. We have to because, like, no, because, like, cause, okay, because this is this this is critique. This is, <laughs> we're not critiquing. We, we have to because this is going to be a five-hour-long podcast. Okay, I know. Yes. So, okay, yeah. But like, I I don't have I ever used the word so as the opening word. I feel like maybe you fucking should because this bit. This I'm not a bitch. I'm sorry. You're an alpha. Uh, thirty six point nine k. Okay, yeah, views. all right, okay. Maybe you should. <laughs> okay. I'm kind of a loner at school, but out of school, I have my three best friends: Claudia Mason, Connor Smith, and Elliot Black. I don't like that. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. okay. They are amazing, but since they don't go to the same school as me, I have no friends at school. Didn't you just say that you had friends of school? Okay, out of school. <laughs> all right, I'm sorry. No, I understand what you're saying. Okay, all right, okay. I live with my mom and dad. My dad is the alpha and of the strongest pack in the world. <laughs> Blood moon. In strength, we are the equivalent of a pack full of alphas. Since I have no siblings, I am in line for being alpha. <sighs> we live in California. I love it here because of the beaches. I have not found my mate. I wish I had because that would stop James Palmer and his posy from bullying me. I think she I, meant posse, but she wrote it posy like this a actually flower. This sounds vaguely familiar. Is this? Ha, are uh, you one of the thirty six point nine k? I I no, because like uh, isn't uh, doesn't this kind it well? Because we've read a different, we've read the other wolf they're all story. The same. Yeah. Okay. So this is okay. This is yeah. fascinating to me now. Okay. Yeah. They're all they all have the same rules. Okay. All yeah. right. It's not all bad. I mean, since I'm pretty outspoken and reasonably st smart, plus I love sarcasm, it means that I always make fun of them. I honestly don't know why they bully me. I mean, I'm in line to be their alpha female. I guess when I finally become alpha female, I can get my, re my revenge winky emoji. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> my story starts like any other... I know we just watched. Commu I know I'm referencing Community a lot recently, but isn't that there's the Abed joke where it's like, oh, they misuse pun punctuation because they can't use words. Yeah, and, that's, and then that's but you're a, a little fucking bit. writer though. And this is a story. It's a story. Anyway, my story starts like any other. So now it starts Meta. on a school day in the morning. Beep beep beep. <coughs> beep beep beep. Smack. Oh, great. Now I have to get another one, I say, looking at my now smashed alarm clock. Oh, that's like, I, so like literally got smashed. Okay. Yeah, because she's an alpha. <laughs> what are you not getting? I don't know. <laughs> get lot, with the fucking program, Josh. I hop out of bed and walk into my bathroom to have a shower. Once clean, I hop out and dry off with a big white towel. I walk out of the bathroom and into my walk-in wardrobe. You're walking a lot. Yeah, there's I a lot of walking <laughs> on this. I pick up my big, my favorite big black sweatshirt and a pair of black shorts. On my feet, I shove on my runners and grab my backpack. I run down the stairs two at a time and walk into the kitchen. Morning, sweatheart, my mom says from one of the kitchen stools. Morning, mom. Can't talk. Going to head to school early. Love you. I kiss her on the forehead and grab an apple. I walk out of the door and start my walk to school. Hey, loser. Weirdo. No one likes you. I feel sorry for the person who is your mate. Uh, those and many more are what I am greeted with. Surprisingly, though, everyone seems in a good mood. It doesn't take me a long time to figure out why. OMG, he's 16 today, so he's going to find his mate. It will so be me. I hear Brittany telling her posy. They all <laughs> sigh and say, James, great. I say to myself sarcastically because I love sarcasm. Oh my God, this is the exact same fucking story as the other one, isn't it? Yeah, because that's exactly what one, happens. The, other, yeah. the only difference was that one was in a fantasy world, right? Where she was a slave. Yeah, and she was a slave, but instead now it's a... Uh... She's a Mary Sue, basically. Okay. I walk in and I'm hit with a tidal wave of students. Not surprising, because our school is huge. I walk around the corner and collide with someone. And that someone, judging by the tingles in my body, is my <laughs> mate. Okay, uh, okay, I, I, uh, I look up uh, okay. and mentally groan, G-R-W-N, 
the person I knocked into, who is also my mate, is James Palmer, the leader of the group that bullies me. And now we switch to James's POV. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, oh, this is the first chapter. Okay, wait, hold on. Okay, so wait, wait. Okay, so I need to. I need to. Okay, okay. We're almost on. done, actually. Too. Are you serious? Wow. Okay, because like I'm already. I I I I mean okay listen credit where credits do yeah following save I'm the following cat along pretty good. save the cat is a, is actually being used in this it's better than Marmaduke it's better than Marmaduke <laughs> you, you put that comment down below well, everybody it's, it's better than Marmaduke it's better than fucking Marmaduke so yeah props but like also a uh, uh, spell check exists right uh, what she's sixteen not uh, yeah but like I I don't know. Or 35. We don't know. We don't know, yeah. Could be. Either. God, man. I Fifty Shades of Grey really did ruin America and how we write stories. <laughs> I don't think it says anything to do. I want to know where this came from because this is wolves. This is wolves, man. Yeah, yeah. Is it Teen Wolf? What is it? I don't I, know is what it, it super, is. Uh, can Supernatural? Is it, uh, I don't know. Super Hulock? I don't know what happened to the teens, but they were writing about wolves. You've got to be kidding me, I say, <laughs> pushing her to the ground. Alicia Blaine cannot be my mate. She's so ugly and she can't even shift. <laughs> that is screwed up. The moon goddess is royally fucked up. You oh, are yeah, hideous uh. and you can't even shift. My mate wouldn't be so pathetic, I say. Her eyes flicker with something. Power and anger. She stands up. I am the future alpha female of this pack <laughs> and you treat me with disrespect. Well, fine. I, Alicia Cara Blaine, reject you, James Eric Palmer, and as soon to be alpha female, you don't even need to accept. I feel like I have been stabbed. I hold my chest with both arms and cower slightly from the power this is now radiating from her. Have a nice life, James, she says with so much venom in her voice that I cower even more. Yeah, the same thing happened. Yeah, wait. And with that, she turns on her heel and leaves me standing there. I watch her leave, and with every step, it feels like I'm being stabbed in the heart. The pain is unbearable. And that's the end of the chapter. Okay, all right, so some thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's up? Um. Uh, okay, so I'm not gonna... I, the cheap shots that I already made is the, the spell check, you know, but like... Uh, so my, my main issue with this isn't even necessarily a plot one, because if this is just how the culture is, whatever, right? Like, every story has to have these... Uh, but the 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 main issue I have is mostly in the fact that both of your main characters are the same, and they just won't we won't admit that yet. And also the repetition of say, thinking something and then saying the exact words out loud. So I didn't realize this, but Wattpad has comments. What are the com? So do you want to know what the the one I'm reading is? Yeah, from two days ago. This is from two days. Wait, so people are like still yeah. You want to know what it is? Yeah. Do you want to guess what it is? Um, I saw a bunch of emojis. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Is it the shock emoji? Is it the period? That's what you get, you bully. Finally, a female rejecting her mate first. That that's happened, but we've read a story. Period. Love. No, he rejected her first in that story. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, never mind. Okay. So never mind. We are breaking new ground here, I guess. Yeah, I think that, yeah. I think that's why this is so popular. Okay. Yes, love. Get it. But that, that doesn't really, that doesn't really... Girls acting it... too I don't care vibe for me, but I'll keep reading it. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So then, so the, yeah, so that's really the only difference then is that the genders are swapped in the yeah. order of progression of... yeah. Well, I think that's a cliche in this new genre that we don't read or know about or have ever heard of. Where the male rejects the mate. And then she <laughs> is really good, and then she comes back, and then he's like, why did I reject you? Because it's like a, a okay. permanent thing. So now it's like the female rejected him first. Okay, then. All right. So, so, so I get okay, cool. But, like, I mean... Okay, that's not... So that now I wonder, and I'm actually a little intrigued, genuinely... Is the male going to turn around and show her up? Is this like an anti-woman wolf story? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> no, okay, Whoa. Well, okay, so, okay, so, all right, so. Can I read this comment that really makes me want to cry on the inside? Yeah. Uh, oh, damn, you go, girl. I'm loving this book already. It's a, <laughs> they think it's a book. 
That's not what a book is, guys. This is a chapter. This isn't a book. This isn't a book, yeah. This is an online story. I, I mean, I don't know. Is that what books are now? Am I crazy? I grew up in a world where according, books... According to Amazon, yes. According books to, are paper. According to the fact that you can just go on Amazon.com. You can do whatever you want. You can want. do a Kindle direct publishing. Yeah, this you can... This yeah. where we are. People think yeah. Nathan Fielder is a manipulative asshole. And then people call this a book. Yeah. Although, okay, to be fair, people called Marmaduke a fucking movie. So I guess we right. could call this a... We can call this a book if this is the first chapter. Maybe I was just born pretentious. That Maybe might be I'm it, the well, problem. Because, like, this is, like... Okay, because that's not that long of a chapter, but, like, that's a, that's a fucking Dan well, Brown chapter. And that's like, you know? a fucking James Patterson chapter. For, that's, yeah, that's, like, a, that's two or three James Patterson yeah, chapters. Yeah, so already it's doing more yeah. than the bare minimum. Yeah. So, like, that's a, yeah, like, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's gonna be, I, I, it, 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 it's, it's whatever, you know? but like, you know, fucking, I, I oh God, Christ, I'm, be, I'm becoming fucking Dan Harmon here, I, it, it, you can't, th this isn't like, you're not, you're not, cha this you're not changing the game just because you change one thing, also, and then, but also, like, I mean, like, you know, like, how many chapters are there, like, uh, 30, yeah, that's a book. Right, I guess. Fuck it, I published a stupid poetry book that only had 40 pages. Yeah, whatever. It has 10 claps emoji, 10 clap emojis. Yeah, I guess it's a book. I, does it? Does anything matter? That's the real question here. So the first, so the, the way Wattpad, Wattpad, Wattpad does comments is by paragraph. I was, like, yeah, because I, I peered over and it looked yeah. like every paragraph had, had a, a, a thing between it, yeah. So, I'm going back to the beginning, and literally, all, the first one where she says, my name is Alicia, Yeah. all the comments are, my name is also Alicia. That's what it is. Uh, okay, I mean, I, I'm not, I, listen, I'm not going to expect that much critical, like, Fucking, I'm not gonna expect the New York Times to come in and like, uh, I it's weird. I, I guess that's the only thing that can happen if you critique everything paragraph by paragraph, right? As opposed to how old are these people? I just I don't know. I, I I'm gonna I don't, assume they're seven, but like it doesn't matter to me because like it's it's fucking oh no. This comment has been reported as offensive and is under review. Do you want to know what the comment is? What's the comment? All caps. Why does every fucking pack name always have blood or moon or both in it? Does and nobody notice this? Four exclamation points. I was points. thinking about that actually, unironically. Like, yeah, yeah, of course it's yeah, fucking, it's yeah. very cliche. Whatever. But I'm like, who, who cares? And then another great book. Is that what they call it in Wattpad? They call it a book? I guess they're called books, yeah. I guess we just got to get used to that lingo. Yeah, just get just get ready for it, I guess. Trees Sarah. died to make books, man. Yeah, but I guess they and died fucking to make. Sol and solar panels are losing their wear and tear, or gaining wear and tear to fucking uh, uh, charge your phone so a bunch of pixels can. Yeah, show you know. You, you know? know what? I think I'm in the wrong actually here. That's. I mean, that's like. I. I mean, because like, I mean, if you d trees died to make Danielle Steele novels, like yeah, and that's then, basically what this is. So yeah, and eh, then you know, trees died to like uh, print out office charts and uh, bullshit. At least someone gave a shit about this, you know. Oh, people are actually correcting um her uh uh her uh spelling of uh p posse okay as posy. So that's nice. All right, yeah, that, that's fine. I mean, I don't know. I I guess the 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 thing I'm interested in now is uh, now we have a, there is a culture of critique that we're gonna experience now. It's amazing. But also, what is the critique gonna be? Because uh, do you do you? Yeah, it, it, so, I want to know because like we critique things based on what we've been taught. And yeah. what we've seen and how long we've lived, you know, because well, what I'm being reminded of right now is everything's you, changed. Well, yeah. But OK, so my so, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Like, so, OK, because there's OK, you're, you're right that everything's changed. And also this is a different generation, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's also um, the, the it really is concerning to me, the idea of. I mean, okay, so, like, in general, like, uh, I get the idea of critiquing paragraph by paragraph. It, it, you do that, right? Obviously. Yeah, I think that's but a good I thing. But I think it's, 
it kind of it i think it could very easily delve into uh you read a paragraph first you make a comment about it and, but there, then, and then the second paragraph that comment is immediately null and void it reminds me of like have you heard of uh the, have you seen those uh 10 hour long star wars video essays where yes the guy will literally stop every other fucking sentence and borderline word yeah, well, I think that's what I'm worried about. That's is, what I thought was going to happen. Yeah, but it's not. It's people legitimately interacting with the character as if it is a person. Mm, OK. Which to me is beautiful. Just like I feel like a, I feel like a, I'm looking into a fishbowl, but I also feel like I am the fish in the bowl mm. of looking into a different world that I don't understand. Yeah, it's uh, hmm. because I'm like. I think this is another effect of nobody having media analysis because one of the basic one of the basic things of media criticism and analysis is knowing that the characters are not real people. You yeah, can talk and, then, to. and then there's also now that weird parasocial, uh, uh, like yeah, expecting like expecting Which a response. I remember when I had friends who would write for fanfiction.net or something, and when I did, I think I fucking probably did. Uh, I don't yeah. think I ever read them that much. I think I did when my friend asked me to read hers. But like, uh, you know, there were people that were like, "Oh my gosh, I love this. I love your uh, perception of Draco Malfoy," and then they used that as more ways to get to Draco Malfoy. Mm. You know what I mean? And that's fair. I think that is a good way. Especially, and it, it, the the interesting thing to me mm. is it's that it's an evolving uh, thing where yeah. you release it in chapters, so then you have the opportunity to change chapters based on public perception. Yeah, uh, which I mean could be good, could be bad. I just I never was a Wattpad kid. No, yeah, neither was I. So this that's I guess what this segment is going to be is learning about Wattpad. To, and learning about the wolf genre. Two people in their 20s <laughs> learn about <laughs> Wattpad, the show. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, I think it'll be interesting. It, well, because it's like still happening. I thought it was old. Mm -hmm. But no, it's still a thing. Okay, so this is for the, the paragraph. I honestly don't know why they bully me. I mean, I'm in line to be their alpha female. There are two comments on it. The first one says, what the fuck? <laughs> it almost feels like, you know, somebody's saying, I have... You know, like you're in school. Yeah. And your friend says to you, I don't know why they bully me. I'm actually really awesome. And then you go, well, yeah, what the fuck? Yeah. That's how that feels to me. Maybe I'm reading into it. <laughs> and the other person says, you mean why you let them bully you? So victim blaming in <laughs> <laughs> the comments right. of a character that yeah. doesn't exist. That's so weird. And really people wonder why. I think it's just adults not understanding what's happening with teens nowadays because like on Twitter, every other tweet I see are people saying, why is Twitter like this? Why is Twitter like this? Why do we never, why can we never have like a common conversation? Yeah. It's just, it's a Twitter thing. And I'm like, no. It's a. Uh... Listen to how kids talk to each other. Hmm. It's. My dad works at the hospital. My mom went to the hospital last week. Oh, well, I was at the hospital yesterday. And it's like, what is going on? <laughs> Weird, actually, yeah. Where does reality exist? We're coming back to this. We're coming someday. back to that one. All right. Okay, so I want to read the description. Okay, all right. Of the Real. story that brought me into this, and then that'll be the end. Okay, all right. Okay. I know what you're thinking. Not the correct you're, of okay, course. Fair enough. Okay, of course. Of this course. is just another one of those rejected my mate, runs away, comes back and she's beautiful, mate realize he loves her and she forgives him. Well, no. This one is a little different. I think the word a little is doing a little bit of the legwork <laughs> there. Alicia Cara Blaine is a werewolf. No surprise. But she's no ordinary wolf. Everyone thinks she can't shift, so they make fun of her. Then she meets James Palmer. Basically, he's an ass, but he's also Kara's mate. You know how this next part goes. <laughs> but when she comes back from running away, let's say things don't go the way you would expect. Let's say she meets a few people you wouldn't expect. Other mates that she's supposed to... 
that she wants to fuck instead of him. I don't know. That's my money. We have That's to my read bet. it to find That's out. That's my bet right there. I, I, I listen. If I can, if I listen, I, you know me. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a hack. I'm a, <laughs> you know, I love me some hack, hackneyed writing. You know. Anyway, go into the comments and tell everyone that you want more of this, and I'll read the next chapter. Um, but you have to bully Josh into <laughs> doing it. No, because okay, because like tweet I mean, at Josh. So at Joshua so, Chinland. So what's gonna happen is so here's what's gonna happen, <laughs> yeah. right? So it's okay. So we we already know she. We're already we're, we. I guess we've, we're crossing the threshold, right? Yeah. So I mean, which, which fine, cool. You don't. It doesn't have to be a, you know a fifteen, uh, sixty, fifteen. You know. Yeah. But like, uh, 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 it, uh -huh. you're you're. So the the plot. It's not gonna be a plot twist. It's gonna be she goes out. She finds she finds the true meaning of life. And werewolves and uh fucks a bunch of guys, becomes her own woman, and then comes back and like devours him. Just I eats hope him. so. That's what I That's want. That's what I want. Yeah. I want just like a lot of murder, like a carry situation. Yeah. yeah. I just want it to be like so left field for the genre that people are like, whoa. Yeah, I think that's what this is. I think I think yeah, it's it has trying to be... to be different from the genre, which I think is really funny because I have no fucking clue what's going on. Yeah, but then like, okay, if I, if I when I remember that other story. We kind of get it. We kind of get it, with, yeah. With the crazy rape themes and the misogynist themes. I hope there's misandry in those. I hope there's uh, the yeah. hatred of men. <laughs> yeah, I hope so, too. Which I'm fine with. That's fine for That's me. That's cool, yeah. So yeah, I, sure. So, okay. Um, and there's going to be dogs that aren't werewolves. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying words now. But like, no. a, like a goofy Pluto situation? <laughs> yeah, oh my God. Dude, <laughs> please. Dude, I want this. I want. I great. want this person just just write out some horrible shit. Oh my god! This I dog got a sweater and learned to talk and fuck uh, human women and had a little dog <laughs> son. And this dog never did, so he's subservient to a mouse. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Let's Thanks. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. All right. So yeah. So okay. So in chapter two, she. But this all takes place in modern day America. With yeah, which in I think Cali, is really funny because she's calling her mom mum, and she's calling yeah. Her, so wait, her hold shoes on. So, she, she, so obviously the creator is from uh, Britain, but she wants to live in California because she's saw, she's seen nine hundred two one zero. But she hasn't they, done like even a little bit of research on yeah. how Americans type. Yeah. Or speak? Does does she when she types like words with like O R? Is it O U R? Or maybe yes. Uh, or <laughs> maybe uh, it's like they're from Britain. Yeah, and, and they then moved they to California. That's possible. That they're is just possible. like rich yeah. and powerful. That would make sense. But then aren't pa so so does in this so are packs multinational or multi-continental? I mean, why couldn't an entire wolf pack get on a plane? <laughs> <laughs> Why couldn't they get on Frontier? Fair, yeah. I want to know. Uh, yeah, yeah, so that's fair. Yeah. I wonder I wonder if there's a colonialism aspect of like actually Christopher Columbus was. <laughs> I think that's the point of Pax. It's a clan, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's a yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know? <laughs> You're just around colonizing. Yeah, true. Huh. And eugenicizing yourself. Which I'm not wrong. That is, yeah, I'm not, that's what's, yeah. what's going well, to yeah, happen. Well, yeah, because the second you said the word bloodlines, fucking and red alert, we're a guys. pack full of alphas. How many betas had to be kicked out of your yeah, fucking Yeah, how many pack? betas did you kill? That's, yeah. that's, again, that's the invincible. We we fought for 2,000 years. That's what I want. Killing off the weakest. That's where I want to know where the oh, yeah, story when goes. Does, yeah, when did they kick out yeah. betas? And, you know, this could be, like, I think this type of shit, like Wattpad shit, could be, like, the female version of writing comic books you know what i mean yeah that's like true. superhero stories well i mean because yeah it's all it's all fucking power <laughs> fantasy right? right like it's all i mean yeah that's that's why i can't like if you if i were to i i want to say for and the record yes women, i'm making fun of this but women can also like superheroes i'm not no, trying yeah, to say that men can like I'm fucking wolf that shit. no i'm superheroes saying superheroes are marketed 
towards uh, uh, teenage guys. boys. Yeah, and and uh, from a traditional like yeah, like marketing demographic, fucking I definitely Disney felt ass assholes pers- personally as a as a woman, and I actually was told that <laughs> girls can't like comic books. Yeah, because I mean, because that was I mean <laughs> what like fucking because <sighs> I loved reading Sandman. I would read it in like high school, and uh, I remember teenage boys who also liked comic books would come up to me and make fun of me yeah, for liking what it's, they it's like. Just, it's, you know, it's it's the fucking sexism, patriarchal fucking bullshit. Yeah, you know? so like, that does exist. So yeah, and like, so I don't know, like, yeah, I, it, this is, to Women me, are gonna be shunned away from, um, from doing that. So they're yeah, gonna find then, something else to do. And they found this, which is, I mean, just, I mean, what the difference is. the same is, thing. Yeah, it's, it's the same power fantasy. The only difference is, They're uh, making it up themselves, which is arguably more creative. Yeah, it is more creative. Every superhero comic's the fucking same. Yeah. You know, they're all just fucking weirdos in underwear. Like, <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean... So, I don't know. I don't know. There's some differences, but it's like, yeah, I get it. Yeah, right? Yeah. I don't know. I guess my point is that there's going to be... It's just interesting seeing a different system of archetypes and cliches and, you know... Well, I just... I've never uh, read a good wolf story. True. You know? I mean, because it's in, it's in its infancy, you know? Well, that's what I'm saying, is like, there's not a comic book... Uh, industry for wolf stories for women. Mm. You know what I mean? Because like this comes off very much like a woman wrote this and there she's trying to be break the barrier of women being subservient in these stories, right? Yeah. But there's no like uh, Stan Lee of, of yeah. wolf stories to where it can go public and it can go and national people will and love yeah, it. Yeah, people fucking and it yeah. Yeah, true. I get that. So, I mean, it's a little bit of a of a downgrade then because there isn't like a people have been so focused on what little boys want for so mm. long and not on what little girls want <sighs> that it's like, oh, well, now we have to make it ourselves and therefore we're making it worse than mm. what a bunch of money and a bunch of talent could do. Yeah. Cuz then like I think about I don't think comic book stories are bad. I think they're actually very good. And yeah. I think a lot of them are very deep, you know, thoughts, you know? Yeah. Um, that little boys just don't understand because they oh, want to yeah, see the, tits the, and gore. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, right. it's, that's the irony. And that exists. But then also it's like, then you have a guy that's like thinking about whether or not he should kill all of humanity or yeah. not. And what the ethics are of genocide. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And in different you know scenarios where you wouldn't normally think about that and where no one would actually think about that and a little boy has access to that hmm but little girls don't that's what i mean okay all right i get what you're saying then yeah Hmm. damn yeah i think nowadays it's i think little girls do have more access oh yeah it's more public it's more like yeah yeah. i think i mean the marvel movies didn't make a billion dollars a piece uh, yeah, but that's because they're movies. <laughs> no, yeah, true. I mean, yeah. Like, if a little girl still walked into a comic book store, oh yeah, there would still be. There's still the guy there that says, "No, you're not allowed to have that." Because yeah, a girl. true. Yeah. Damn shame. Yeah. Hmm. So anyway, I'm gonna read this next week. <laughs> I'm gonna do just chapter two next week. Two Tell hours. us down below. We've been recording for two hours. Just to, just that's just for me. That's. <laughs> You said you were okay with it? I did say I was okay with it, yeah. So, all right. What a silly man. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, you can go first. Uh, okay. All right, welcome to the Reddit segment, everybody. Hey, guys, welcome. Red. Red, like my anger. <laughs> like my anger. Um. All right, okay, all right. Okay. I need, I, okay, I, I, I'm just can gonna... I, can I barrel through this one? <laughs> if you want to, yeah. All right, it's a, it's just, it's, a, it's a... I don't know actually what it is. <laughs> I don't know why I started I'm saying gonna, that. I'm gonna cozy on up. It is almost one o'clock. I'm gonna fall asleep to okay. the sound of your soothing voice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, speaking of my soothing voice, I think Jane Lynch called me and said that I needed to make a change for the podcast. Yeah, so. you have to. Yeah, you have yeah. to. Uh, yeah, okay, you can do the change. You're good. Am I the <laughs> asshole for telling my girlfriend that she cleans up well despite being poor? Okay, you don't have to do the voice. Right, yeah, okay, 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 all right. Fuck you, Jane Lynch. I'm going to talk my normal way. <sighs> Am I the asshole? <laughs> God damn it, Sarah. 
For every frame is another frame I must edit. <laughs> Paintings of frames. Every In frame's a painting. Okay, fine. Okay, all right. My girlfriend comes from a struggling family. What's the title? Am I the asshole <laughs> for telling my girlfriend that she cleans up well despite being poor? I've already fucking said it. You didn't say it in a normal voice, though. Well, you all know. You, you all gotta know say it in a normal voice for the fucking repurposed content all right fine thank you my girlfriend comes from a struggling family she has 12 siblings yes 12 <laughs> and faced financial problems her whole life already you sound like a judgmental asshole <laughs> oh. uh it still continues to this day she lives in a tiny apartment and her with her family as she has to care for her mom and they consistently have problems with the electricity mold etc I hate to discuss my status in comparisons to hers, but I'm, quotations, blessed. Hashtag blessed. <laughs> I'm hashtag blessed. Despite this, I'm passionate about supporting those in need and currently involved in the development of a charity. So are you, so are you helping your, you're helping your partner then, right? Well, actually, that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. Anyway, this is about my girlfriend, so moving on. <laughs> You wouldn't be able to tell that she's disadvantaged by just looking at her. She dresses well, looks clean, and has the features to pull off the image she desires to protect. What? Here's the problem. Okay. A few days ago, I brought her along to dinner with a few friends. She was nervous about meeting them because she felt she didn't fit in. However, they adored her. She looked stunning in her dress, spoke well... And grabbed everyone's attention. It was all effortless, and she was the highlight of the evening, despite her humble background. Oh my god, fuck you. <laughs> Holy shit. On our way home, she told me that my friends were sweet. Here's the problem. Oh? I told her that she cleans up well, despite coming from a poor background. She stared at me, and then got mad. I asked her what's wrong, and she said that everything is wrong yeah <laughs> i'm an asshole obviously i explained that she's great at fitting in and that's actually hard to pull off when you're working with little so it was a huge compliment what the fuck are you talking about what 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 <laughs> she thinks i'm an asshole now and canceled our upcoming trip abroad am i really the asshole here <laughs> everyone i've spoken to disagrees but I want to expose myself to a variety of opinions. So you didn't, so... Oh, no, what? I'm losing my fucking mind tonight. Yeah, no, uh, obviously you're the asshole. What? Like, shit. I, uh, you, 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 I, I want to highlight... You about having a charity. You're not even fucking helping out your, your fucking partner. I want to highlight the sentence. She dresses well, looks clean... And has the features to pull off an image she desires to project. And I really want everyone to understand, and you do, because you're smart. You don't understand. That that means poor people dress badly, are smelly and dirty. <laughs> or big stinky poo-poo heads. And are ugly. That's what this guy that's says. That's what he's saying, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that's the, that's the, uh, because when, if, implying that there's a difference to the norm with those... And it implies that the norm is that. Yeah. So, okay. It's um, pretty amazing that this guy legit said to his girlfriend, like, you really faked it hard today. Yeah. You really fucking, you made him think that they're actually, you're actually worth coming out and being wealthy. Yeah. You really fucking. <laughs> what a dick. <laughs> you really pulled off the lie that you're worth anything. Bro, like literally saying. <sighs> what like, do you mean you want to break up? I don't yeah, what, do you mean? Yeah. what are you talking about? Literally saying like, what's up? Well, didn't you also? He said also that I like spoke well too, and I'm like, what spoke the well, yeah, yeah, that was a big one. What are you talking about, bro? What are you talking about there? Oh, she's actually deaf. <laughs> That's a callback. That's a callback. But no, fucking. Um, or just no. like poor people are stupid. I guess, or don't don't know words with more like like I don't know. Do poor people just, does he think they all have like southern accents or something? Like, I don't know. Like Backwood Hicks? Is that what he's thinking? That's pretty hilarious to me. I don't know. I think it's just, I think if any guy, if any guy was like, hey, you speak really well, 
I would be like, I'd be like, what the wow, fuck does that you mean? Can fuck off. Yeah. I, just, and it could be about anything. It could be, I've, I work customer service and over the phone, I've had people like, be like, oh my God, thank you so much for speaking English. Oh yeah. Cause they, they, they're, they're racist. Uh, yeah. They're racist. And they're just like, oh, great. A true blood American speaking American. And they don't mean like, oh, I'm glad that I didn't get a Spanish speak. Like they don't mean it literally. They mean, I'm glad you don't have an accent. An accent. an accent, yeah, and uh, yeah, or if you have an accent, it's like a Chicago <laughs> accent or something, yeah, you know? something that I deem uh, deem white, you know, white like, yeah. and good, yeah, and not yeah. brown and bad. So yeah, no, that's obviously that implication. <laughs> so yeah, no, yeah. what the fuck? What? A, <laughs> it's also like I think the element of wow, I'm impressed. Like, what do you yeah. think of me normally? Yeah, do you think I'm just like a lazy piece of shit all the time that doesn't know how to get dressed and take a shower? Like, and speak? Yeah. What the fuck, actually? Uh, apparently he also likened her to a chameleon that can alter its skin color. I I don't like that. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why I don't like that. Um, except for the obvious reasons of he thinks that she cleans up well for being poor, you know? Yeah, that's literally that's, that's, it. It's that's, just it's like, it. you tricked us. We all know you're poor, really? Yeah. Which is amazing. Um, and somebody else said, but he's involved in the development of a charity because everyone knows that 99% of the time, the most efficient way to help other people is to start your own charity from scratch. Yeah, literally. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Aren't they usually like the guys that make the charity are just trying to do scams? Yeah, usually like um, because like you know it's kind of like know, I'm well, I mean, so, like most uh most of the time, like I mean, there's like actual reputable charities, obviously, but mm. like there's definitely a, a a trend a trend where it's like you make your own personal charity. It's kind of like when you do like Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, yeah, where it's like oh, Bill, I have so Gates, much money, and I just put it into this thing just so I don't have to tax it because technically yeah. it's a charity, but I run all the money in the charity. And I don't you know. know, I'm a cynical bastard. If yeah. anybody else knows more about charities, you're right. I'm wrong. But like, I mean, it's it's like um, I don't know. It seems like a. It's a usually, when I hear someone's making their own charity, to me, it's like, oh, you're trying to avoid paying your taxes. And if yeah. you're this rich asshole, then yeah, you're probably I, that's what you're trying to do. I I it just it comes off to me, and this is obvious, and everybody's gonna be like, yeah, that's what it that's what it is. Is that this guy is some fucking um kink with telling poor people. You are poor and you will always be poor. Yeah, that's the only and way you can come, I yeah. I was born rich. Yeah. And all of them are rich. Yeah. Yeah. That's how he, that's how he uh, gets out of his goo. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's pretty much <laughs> that's it. Your, okay, all right. Fucking, yeah, what an asshole. Yeah, Jesus. what a dick. Let's hope my story didn't get deleted. Uh, fair warning, I didn't read my whole story. Okay. <laughs> That's why I like Am I the Devil, because they that one obviously was removed, but they saved it before it went removed. That is true, yeah. That's, That's nice. why I, uh, what is it? Fucking, I think they have um, a bot or something. True. All right, so this 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 next story is just a regular Am I the Asshole. This one was controversial, Ooh. Uh, but also it's pretty obvious the answer, Okay. Uh, especially for viewers of our podcast. Um... Okay. Apparently, this has gotten rewarded twice, though. So, oh, um, if it's bad, yeah, good. If it's good, <laughs> and I am gonna read this fucking um, what is it? Fucking uh, yeah. Okay, here we go. So, okay, am I the asshole? I don't know. From am I the asshole? Sorry. Yeah. Am I the asshole for dead naming my own child? Yes. Yes, you are. Yeah, uh, I do. I, I trigger warning. Yeah, you are. Uh, transphobia, obviously. Already. Is, yeah. Yep. And possibly other trigger warnings because uh, we knows don't know. This is gonna fucking go. I am a mother, fifty nine female, of three child. We thought that my oldest, thirty three male, got all of the quote bad egg traits and hoped that our youngest, twenty four female, would be like her older sister. Our youngest turned out to be even more of a handful after about the age of eight. She was always questioning authority, the rules we had in place, getting in fights at school, etc. In middle school, she was diagnosed with ADHD and discovered she had anger issues. We found out after she graduated high school, roughly around 18 years old, she was autistic. My husband, 63 male, and I love her dearly, and she had a very rough childhood. She got caught up in the wrong crowds, did a lot of bad things, etc. You're I, 
saying your own child had a rough childhood. Yeah, what a good parent you must have fucking been. Jesus. And that she was diagnosed with anger issues. Yeah, I think you might have. Oh, you just were, you birthed an angry child already, and also saying that like your your first child is the bad egg too. Like, and as soon as you said autistic, and this person has already anger issues and all this shit, I'm like, you abused that kid. Yeah, you abused that kid for honestly, sure. Yeah, yeah. So I can't. Okay, so I can't even imagine the pain she suffers through on a daily basis from the PTSD she was diagnosed with at 11. I admit I did not take her diagnosis seriously at first because what she was known for wanting attention in bad ways. Wow, what is this on? Why am I the devil? Because it should fucking oh be. Oh my god! But it became more apparent over the years, especially after being diagnosed with her bipolar type two, later medically diagnosed with DID at the age of twenty-two. Oh my god. We thought this whole dilemma was because of her latest diagnosis. What? Oh, uh, growing, what? Yeah, growing, I'm sorry. No, you're good. I, I'm confused too. Growing up, she used a lot of online aliases in her games that also got her in lots of trouble. And I didn't think too much about the names because it was slightly safer than using her real name with strangers on games. We've always had a rocky relationship and she's rejected me almost the entirety of her life, starting basically with she would walk herself to the bus stop. On her Facebook and other social media, she's posted using a very different name over the past six or seven years and recently different pronouns within the last two to three years. My daughter was born from me and I named her. I know she's a girl in her real name. Wow. Um, should I sw- so uh, I'm trying to figure out what the actual, what is it? Oh, so they, he is their pro- I'm, I'm going to say they, he from here out. She, yeah, wow. The mom's going to keep saying them. she. Yeah, I'm sorry. I want to apologize to this person. Jesus. They find they buy frilly clothes, get their nails done, does a lot of girly things. But she, they recently requested that I, at minimum, start using her chosen name, and she will quote tolerate me misgendering. They like they he whatever that means. Her wow, what a fucking bitch this mother is. Jesus fucking Christ! Bro. I simply told them no, I will not use that name. It is not the, their name, and she, uh, they, sh- oh, God fucking, de- I hate the fact that it's being dead. They're being dead named in the story. In the story, yeah. Jesus fucking wow. Christ! Wow. And they should stop trying to tell people it is. Their license still says their real name because that's what it is. They yelled at me saying that it's not that hard to use the name since it sounds similar to their dead name. And they told me it would make her happy. I desperately want them to be happy, but this isn't their name. They said they... Ugh, fucking... They, they keep saying... Fucking mom keeps saying she. I fucking hate this mom. They said they were was getting they were getting legally changed regardless if I liked it or not, and that they can't wait until the day they move out. They also have often thrown in my face that I'm a cause for a lot of their issues and that I, quote, ruined our chance at a, chance at a relationship... When I gave birth to them, I told them that the name I gave her was gorgeous and that they should be thankful for it. We have yet to speak so far since this occurrence. Am I really the asshole for wanting to use their real name? Yes. You are an asshole for many things. There's a lot. Yeah. Uh, Fucking Christ. It's like the mom from hell. Yeah. This is the worst mom I think I've ever ever read a thing. Yeah, there's one comment I want to read because obviously this got downvoted a lot because I think people didn't like the fact that yeah. uh, people don't like the dead naming. People assume that they're the asshole. The mom's the asshole. Yeah. Um, and because uh, it makes sense because yeah, the mom's the asshole here. Mm-hmm. And it's not even like uh, it, it's I, I get why people are downvoting this one a lot, actually. Yeah. But there are a lot of comments. I'm going to only read this one, though. OK. OK. This. Uh, OK. Here's what this sounds like to me. You. <laughs> me, 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 me. Whoops. <laughs> Somehow my children ended up traumatized through some complete mystery. Yeah. Me, 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 me. I'm so empathetic. Me, 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 me. My child refuses to center me in their life. Me, 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 me. Why is he angry? I'm just referring to admit that he's a per. I'm just refusing to admit that he's a person who exists apart from me. Me, 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 me. <laughs> Somehow my child thinks I'm to blame for his childhood. Sometimes Raya can be good. Sometimes Raya really fucking, yeah. And someone obviously points out, right? Where the hell did the 11 year old get PTSD? That seems well, like a massive thing to leave saying. out. I'm like, anger issues. Oh. Oh my God. The OP is responding to people. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite part. Okay, let's go. Okay, so, okay, another comment. We've been compared to each other our entire lives. Be me. Why couldn't you even try to get to the community? Come on. Oh, like, is this the actual fucking um person? Like, 
Oh my god. Okay, so OP's username, uh, I'm gonna not say the full. Uh, it's something about support, like actual support, right? Okay. Ironically, right? Because right. it's one of those like auto generated names. I'm confused. So, okay, the OP's username yeah. basically implies that she's actually a good supportive person because, like, because it was the a name support is auto generated thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so someone may, points out it's OP's username for me. And oh my God, this person's gotten negative. I do not know how to change it. Why is it bad? <laughs> the one who needs the support is your child. <laughs> but okay, so we've been compared to each other our entire lives. B, me. Why couldn't you even get try to get into community college? Like, why, sister? Even ex brother went and they bo both have more education from it, as an example. This comes as no surprise to me. Oh, so is that like. Wait, hold on. So is I think it's that OP. The, the son? I guess, yeah. But what I is guess happening, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck is happening. Okay, so why is oh my god, this okay, basically the oh she's just not understanding that she's an asshole. Okay. Yeah, like literally and like not even like defending herself. She's just asking like what's wrong? Yeah. Yeah, she's a transphobe. Yeah, and like no one like I guess oh my god. Oh, someone's hoping that's a troll rage baiting, which it might be, but like honestly, fucking... probably because it's like I don't know how you could have a kid. How could anyone have a kid and then have it have your kid be diagnosed? Yeah, with and then... anger issues at like and PTSD at eleven. Yeah, ADHDs from birth is whatever. You know, your yeah. kid is neurodivergent. Fine. I if if I had a kid, my kid was neurodivergent, I would immediately be like. Oh my god, have I done something wrong? You know? Yeah, like, right. I'd be yeah, like, oh like, shit. But in reality, like that's not like yeah, the the real Assuming really, I'm neurotypical, you know. Yeah, and then like it's, you know, fucking, fucking know. uh uh <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. This this is not neurotypical behavior having a podcast. <laughs> uh no, but no, fucking yeah. um no, like uh, yeah, when you when you you give your you PTSD from like 11 is like there was something. a war in your pussy? Like yeah. what happened to yeah. your kid that it's a and why didn't you help your kid? Yeah, like why would you not take it yeah, seriously? You didn't take it seriously. You got a PTSD you admitted diagnosis. That you didn't take it seriously too. And you're like, I think that's the thing. I'm. I wonder. I'm gonna say narcissist, but I don't know. Don't. That's. I mean, that's kind of like me my at, like we you we you. Yeah, like, yeah. You know. I'm gonna say narcissist, but I mean in the colloquial narcissist, not the clinical narcissist. Yeah, of like it just feels very like. Here's the little thing I did wrong, so I look like a good person because I know that sometimes people do things wrong. Yeah, and but then, it's the fundamental misunderstanding that you do have to take responsibility for your actions. Well, you yeah, can't you say, can't just say you did something wrong and then I'm you go have a perfect, tea party. Like, yeah, but like obviously your actions make like and your words show that you think that you are perfect. Yeah, and nothing is wrong, and nothing that you've done is wrong. Yeah pretty epic i <laughs> fucking hell man that's wild yeah that's a wild fucking story i'm sure it's real it, it's probably real somewhere if it's not there it's somewhere yeah somewhere it's somewhere I mean, I that's know. somebody's mom yeah jesus christ man i just want to say i am sorry for fucking using the wrong pronouns the op put in the wrong pronouns on purpose because I, th I think it, she is fucking a crazy cunt like yeah. jesus I I really Christ. I don't, it really baffles my mind, just personally. Why anyone, mother, you don't get special treatment. I don't. I'm sorry. I just don't fundamentally believe that as a person. That your mother is like, I birthed you out of my vagu, and I named you. I know what you are. I think you can shut the fuck up. Because yeah, that you're 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 <sighs> giving you're taking away the individuality of a person by claiming them in that way you know yeah and i really hate all mother shit like that where it's like me and my daughter have a soul bond that nobody knows about and i fundamentally believe that no person can ever know another person and including you have a kid you don't know what that fucking kid is they have a consciousness that 
I you mean, don't get to you don't you don't get to understand yeah, the depths see. of their consciousness and in the that's same way their human right oh yeah and then the same way that you don't know the person that you walk across the street from yeah has a consciousness you know but just like being next to a stranger and just like having a child both of those things is a blessing yeah you know having somebody next to you so when the person says to you, hey, could you please use these pronouns for me? Just like a stranger and just like with a child, you go, okay, not yeah, that big I mean, a deal. It's, it's, yeah, it's like holding the door Basic for someone, respect. you know? Basic like, human respect, yeah. Making sure that, like, you know, you don't you don't park like an asshole, you know? Yeah, it's just... Why isn't it you, you flush after you take a piss and you leave the toilet seat down, you why know? Why is common sense and decency not so common? You exactly, know? yeah, you know, I don't know, like, shit... It's a, it's turned into a weird political thing because I don't know Republicans want to take our minds off climate change. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. That's, I mean, yeah, and it's it's putting like actual kids' lives at risk, and it's fucking ridiculous, and it makes me so fucking mad every time I see it. Hmm. Yeah, it's fucked up. I can't imagine what it feels like to be born in the wrong body. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's it's um, fuck, man. Having that, it's, it's, yeah, it's fucking... And I don't understand why no one can understand that concept. Or be empathetic towards it of, like, I don't, I, yeah. it's just, like, fuck, man. I don't, I feel like every, and I think that's the thing, is I think it becomes, like, a straight people don't understand, you know, or cis people don't understand. And, yeah, I think to a point, but I think everybody, everybody understands what it feels like to be an other... Because they, you're never going to understand another person. Yeah. On some level, I think every single person has this part of them that feels othered in some way, unless you're a narc. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, where you think, yeah, I am another, but I'm the best one, you know? <laughs> and, and I think at that I'm point, alpha. but that, that's the insecurity comes from pushing that down and mm. not embracing the feeling of, yeah, I'm not like those people but that doesn't mean I deserve to be disrespected. Hmm. Yeah. And I think then you can get empathy from that because you're like, yeah, I have been othered before and it felt like shit. So I'm going to make this person, I'm going to try to make this person feel good. Hmm. Yeah. Everyone has that. I think every single person has that. But it's just most people. They don't want to deal with it. They don't want to put the work in. No. Because it is work. It's work, yeah. yeah. And it fucking sucks. You have to get over that you're not the only person in the world. Yeah. And everyone needs to accept you. Yeah. God. Fucked up, man. Yeah. But I think also some people will be like, well, if no one else is going to accept me, I'm not going to accept other people. And it's like, well, then you're a child. <laughs> That's what children yeah. say. Yeah. You should grow up and That's be an a adult very, and stop. Like simplistic view of the world, you know, because it it and, and it's paradoxical because then like the people that the like terps mm. or conservatives, they very much care yeah. about trans issues, and they pretend like they really give a fuck, and it's because they do, and it's childish to to like you know when you become an adult you're like oh I don't really care that much about being centered in other people's lives that much hmm. i just want to do my own thing and make other not harm people yeah <sighs> but if you really care you really want to be important to everyone in the world like a narc then you're gonna end up doing immature ass shit hmm. to get attention fuck man and i think that's why i don't understand people because i've been living in this for like years <laughs> So now I've just forgotten what it's like to be a kid that needs attention from people. Mm. Nah, I still need attention. <laughs> I get it. I, yeah, I mean, I do a podcast, of course. I like the attention. Money. I've regressed. <laughs> <laughs> people DM me nice things and I'm like, oh. Like score. No one DMs you. me nice things. Start DMing Josh nice Don't things. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Piss off. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Yeah. And because also I'm the one that brings up ads. <laughs> All right, let's do ads. Welcome to the ad break. Hey, guys. Oh, I need to turn it blue. Fuck. Okay, never mind. Hey, are you guys enjoying this podcast right now? Hey, are you? Well, you should like, subscribe, and hit that goddamn bell and leave a comment on YouTube. You better. And rate us five stars on Spotify and Apple. You better. And.
And if you want to support us financially, support us financially. Support us financially. Fuck. Fuck. Do it again. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, you can go to patreon.com forward slash uh, APWSTR or buymeacoffee.com forward slash APWSTR. Josh, do we have any copies to read? We do. But if you go to Patreon, uh, oh. you'll get exclusive content, uh, early releases, and ad free. So you don't have to hear all this. Yeah. And with Buy Me Coffee, uh, you don't get the extra content or any of the early releases, but you do get to have a little section here where I read whatever you say on your coffees. Yeah. And I know we have a couple because we were gone for a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm sorry, I apologize for the delay, you guys. Really I appreciate the I'm coffees. not apologizing. That was for our mental health. It was. Oh, we have a new patron. Thank you, Sarah Medina. Oh, never mind. Thank you. Not me. Alice in Mexico bought us a coffee. Thank you. Hi, I started listening to your show about a couple weeks now, and I love it. I was hoping if I could ask if Sarah would read more werewolf stories. Guilty pleasure. I laughed so hard that I some got of the, you. Yeah, I laughed so hard that some of the people I delivered to stop to stop with what they were doing to look at me. Parentheses Amazon driver. This is well, the reason. You got it. You started a segment, dude. You started a literal segment. A whole segment. Uh, someone bought us two coffees. Uh, this is Carly's mom. I wanted to buy you a coffee. Hashtag Doja Cat. Hashtag Pusheen. So we gotta explain. Yeah, our uh, intern's uh, mother. <laughs> mom started listening to the podcast and apparently she, Confused. the entire time we were talking about Doja Cat, she was thinking about the po- uh, Pusheen, the cat. Yeah. <laughs> and Carly had to explain to her that it was actually Doja Cat, which I think is adorable. It and is that's very, great. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you for listening. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to give her, we're not, your uh, Carly's never going to get paid. Uh, <laughs> Wow. Okay. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm I joking. actually work very hard to make sure that she gets paid at some at point, some point yes. later in the future. Yeah, she'll get yeah. paid in in coffees. Uh, <laughs> literally coffee. Well, that we buy from Walmart. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. Anastasia bought us ten coffees. I just recently found your podcast on the Tiki Talky, and I'm incred- incredibly grateful. Right now, I'm watching at 4.30 a.m. because I just had a septoplasty, pretty extensive nose surgery, so I can finally be able to breathe through my nose. Congrats. Congrats. Before my 30th birthday in August. Hashtag treat yourself. Nice. Anywho, you guys are swells. Thank you both for your insight, humor, and just your all-around awesomeness. Sarah, uh-huh. I love your grit and sass. Thank you. Josh, I truly appreciate your introspectiveness, and I absolutely love it when you get fired up about politics. Thanks for the joy and pleasant distraction. Stay safe and much love and good vibes to you both. I want to say that your compliment has really fucked Josh up a lot. Yeah, what the fuck do you mean I'm introspective? He doesn't think that he is, but I think he very... You're, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah, he is. A lot. I don't know. I don't believe it. Walking off set. <laughs> <laughs> the first coffee to make me leave. Josh doesn't take compliments very no, well. No, I don't. He gets mad for some reason. I think it's beca- it's like... um. You know, like when yeah, you it's see a trauma it, response, <laughs> maybe. But you know, like when you see a cute animal and you get really aggressive, like cute aggressiveness. I think that's what it is. Uh, hmm. This is very Sundere. Like if you go to Josh and you're like, "Hey, yeah, great hair," he'll be like, "What the fuck, idiot!" <laughs> <laughs> and what the fuck, idiot, indeed. <laughs> Buymecoffee.com forward slash APWSTR. Back to the show. <laughs> Welcome to the listener story segment. Those are some crazy ads. Sarah, you got some stories for us? Yep. Ready? Oh, I, I should warn you, Sarah. I know this was this was a week ago. Yeah. <laughs> so I know there's an age gap story in here somewhere. So just oh, yeah. a warning. Are you comfortable? I, I remember. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. I remember. Right, it. We're doing it. Yeah, it's fine. All right. We're doing it. We're doing all eight stories. We're doing at it, baby. Two at, at one twelve in the morning. We're gonna be up until that person that had that uh that yeah, extensive. Yeah, four thirty. Yeah, we're gonna be yeah. up until four thirty doing this podcast. How ironic! Uh, whatever, I'll call it tomorrow. Hate my job. <sighs> All right. <laughs> All right. Title: Am I the asshole for not listening to my nurse brother? Carly. Title. Oh wait, fuck. No, I have to say the name first, right? All right. Anyway, so this <laughs> yes, is from. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Sorry. So anyway, this is from Zach. He, him. Am I the asshole for not listening to my nurse brother? Titled by Carly. Okay. Trigger warning. Death. <laughs> suicidal <laughs> thoughts. Okay. Buckling up. Let's go. Let's fucking go. That was a terrible buckle. It was very wet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, hey, guys. Do you lube up your buckles? <laughs> I don't think that's an effective safety measure. Okay. All right, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. Hey guys, thanks so much for reading and wanted to say I really enjoy your reactions and storytelling. Thank you. Thank you. Jumping headfirst into the story, for eight years I was with my wife until she passed two years ago from cancer. 
Wow, I'm very sorry. I'm sorry. Holy shit. Um, I'm in my early 30s, and after a lot of suicidal issues, I struggled with after the love. I struggled with after the love of my life passed. I'm getting better. My brother, who is a nurse, and I were talking about different things that increase the likelihood of getting cancer. Ooh, I don't know about uh, that. I don't know like where this is going. <laughs> Microwave radiation from your TV. <laughs> 5G. Yeah, literally, right? That's, yeah. that's where that's going. I told him I didn't care about anything like that because I don't care if I got cancer or any other illness. And in fact, I did get diagnosed with cancer or another terrible... If I did get diagnosed with cancer or another terrible illness, I wouldn't get treatment. Okay. My brother was shocked and upset. I reminded him all the suffering my wife went through. She had so many chemos, countless procedures, in pain constantly... And all the hospital stays made it impossible for her to do anything she wanted. I didn't want to go through with that. I didn't want to go through that. I didn't want those around me to go through it alongside me. My brother has not dropped it, saying I'm still depressed and don't mean it. Okay. All right. Wow. Well, okay. <sighs> I tried to explain that this isn't due to grief. I will admit the pain of loss never goes away, but I've managed. This is a decision based on the fact no doctor knows what will work, what won't, and how much time you have. Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want the regret and torment I knew she had. I want to try to spend time with loved ones doing whatever I want. I understand no one wants to have their loved ones uh, die without a fight, but I don't want to fight. Is that so terrible? I think uh, it's up to no, you, yeah, fan. it's your choice. Yeah, free country. I don't know. Like, shit. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just like... I, you know, it's like, um, I think, yeah, it, it's... um. Uh, this is w weird. Uh, fucking, I get the idea. Um, of like, uh, I I don't want to say too much because they didn't uh give permission to talk about this. But like, oh, yeah, we had a we had a recent event. Uh, that uh, or not recent event. Uh, we recently we we had a similar conversation with someone about the idea that like if you change the way you're living because that, of death or because of an illness, is that really your life? Yeah, which and, is an interesting way to think about stuff that yeah. I never even thought of. So, so, I mean, no, I think, yeah, with that perspective in mind, you're making the choice of, because, I mean, yeah, you don't know if chemo's gonna fucking work, especially if the cancer, unless it's, like, a, like, colon cancer, that's, like, the only one that apparently you're, you're cool if you can get rid of real quick. <laughs> I don't but, know. Yeah, there's but stuff like, like kidney cancer or something where, like, you only one kidney. It, 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 it varies. But, like, yeah, you know, like, the idea of, like, yeah, but, like, if you get, like, a really serious cancer of, like, you know, like, um... Terminal uh, disease. Yeah, like terminal that. disease, and you're like, I just want to live my life then. Yeah, I don't yeah, care. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, live your life then. Well, I mean, I... I think it's weird of your, uh, uh, nurse brother <laughs> to be, like... Oh, you're depressed. I mean, I want... I, I know a lot of people in healthcare fields that go into healthcare fields and then come out and even mental health care fields that'll be like, you're this, you're that, you're that, you're this, you're yeah, this, you're and that. Yeah, it's just like, you know, diagnosing all the time. And, and it's like, like that's bro, shitty. come on. <laughs> I, you can't do that. But I mean, I think also, I don't know if I'm wrong for this or if I'm just being an indivi a crappy individualist American, but mm. I really fundamentally feel like every human being is born into the world with one possession and it is your own mortality. Hmm. If you get to a point where you get to decide what happens, you know, go ahead and do that. Now, suicide is a different thing, but yeah, I think, yeah, that's the, the <laughs> key caveat here. I mean, because like the, the, um, with like a terminal disease where, you know, it's, it's you know, it's going to happen. You have, you have the decision. The of doing do you that. try to prolong until the day, like how long you have until you die, or do you just live the life? I even think euthanasia should be decriminalized. That's no, my no, personal opinion. That's a completely different thing. You should have the choice if there's, if you have the choice between going through a painful death yeah. or a simple death, you know, like. Well, I mean, yeah, a painless one, yeah. When you, oh uh, yeah, a painless death when the alternative yeah. is, it, that, those are your only two options. But then I also think, like, I mean, there is a part of me that like I know knew a lot of young people who contemplated suicide and even tried to act on it. And ninety nine percent of suicides, um, in the moment before, usually are oh my god no I want to live. You yeah, know? and like you know fucking I, I mean that's the it it sucks when it, it really sucks that your brother is still kind of judging you. It feels like for this 
uh, the, the your suicidal I, thoughts and depression of like I think really he just cares a lot and that's yeah but I do think it's a little weird to just uh, it, it is that diagnosing thing where it's like you just yeah. want it you're a you're a nurse so you want to diagnose and put things and he probably doesn't he's probably thinking let's be honest like selfishly like I don't want you to to die die yeah which isn't I mean it, it's that's selfish natural. in the way of like it's about him not wanting you to die, but like it's mm-hmm. a natural response. I think the way to take that is just, oh, my brother wants me to live. Yeah, and that's true. And like, uh, I think if you set a boundary definitely with him if he keeps bringing it up, which it sounds like he is. Yeah, but just be like, man, listen. I've this, seen what. Yeah, like I'm putting my foot down. We're not going to talk about this again. And you don't even need to go into your position on it or his position on it. You could just say like. Listen, man, I'm not going to talk about this again. Yeah. If you try to talk to me about it, we're not talking. Exactly. No, I think, uh, and I don't know, fucking, the the good news is that you, you're you not in that position right now, you know? <laughs> well, uh, you don't know, because you, you haven't know done it yet. But, you haven't gotten it yet, but like, I mean, yeah. uh, you know, it's your, it, live your life to the fullest, I guess is the weird. People are fucking scared to death, man. People are scared to, scared to death of death, like, really it's just like i w- i don't know rhetorically i would be like what are you gonna do when i'm 90 <laughs> you want me to continue you're gonna take me to the fountain of youth like what yeah. is gonna happen uh, that's true it's yeah. gonna happen at some point you know it's gonna happen to everybody yeah just just make use of the time that you have yeah now, we'll see what you know? crazy wacky adventures we get up to big ass world go live in it you know mm-hmm. make use of it i don't know shit yeah I'm sorry though, man. I am sorry though. Uh, we did solve it. Yeah, we, we did solve it. We though. did solve it. <laughs> Rice. Yeah. The story of how we're actually two big assholes that's uh, that feel like we have to solve everything. That's the real storytelling. Solved to suicide. Did it. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus, Sarah. Jesus. Do I have motherfucking listener stories? Yeah, I do. Okay. This next story. Comes yeah. to us from Anna. She, her. Noise. Am I the asshole for not repairing my relationship with my parents? Probably not, man. <laughs> probably not. You're probably fine. Titled by Carly. Yeah. I'm 40 years old and currently live in my hometown. I'm approximately seven minutes from my brother, 38, and four minutes from my parents, mother, 58, father, 61. Okay. I originally moved here to help take care for my grandmother in her older years. She has since passed and we, my husband and I, live in her house. When we first moved in, my mother assured me that I would not be caring for grandma on my own and that she just needed someone to cook and clean. Grandma quickly went downhill and needed much more help than I could give. Mom and dad would only stop by on Saturday for about an hour. Every time they would wait until I got off work, call and tell me to put my cat away so they could bring their dogs two little dipshit Yorkie poos. (laughs) You're not the asshole. Grandma (laughs) loved the dogs, though, so I couldn't argue too much. That's fair. Yeah. It got to the point that grandma started messing, her, uh, messing herself in bed and trying to, hiding it from, try to hide it from me. Oh. She would also refuse to shower regularly and her weight kept dropping dangerously low, 79 pounds at her lowest. Holy shit. I would call my mother to ask for help or small favors and be met with a brash attitude. Okay, yeah. Can no. you come over and help grandma take a shower? She hasn't showered all week. Now? Can't you wait until the weekend? Mind you, my mother doesn't do anything at home. I genuinely mean nothing. My dad is a control freak, so she does nothing but sit on her ass and play WoW. I kept getting more and more aggravated. I pushed their stupid dog off me one time, and dad told everyone I was abusive to dogs. (laughs) Their dogs are annoying and untrained, and I did not hurt the dog in any way. I was about to get my grandmother out of California, where she could spend the rest of her uh, last years of her life with her son and husband, a nurse. That following Xmas, I wanted to have my family and my husband's family at house for dinner. My parents were supposed to come and bring soda. They RSVP'd and then declined, saying that they would only be over for dessert because, quote, it's too many people. Mind you, my husband and I have been married for 10 years at this point, and they know how large his, fam- his family is and that they were all invited. It, was, it would have been a viable, however lame, answer at first, but now, after you agreed, it just looks sad on your part. And I was sad about it. I don't know many fan. I don't host many family dinners. And I was really looking forward to this. Oh, yeah. The week leading up to dinner was really difficult at work. 
I was working long hours and I also had to work Xmas Eve, making dinner prep even harder. Jesus Christ. My mother texted me that day asking to come over. I was irritated and confused because they were coming over, quote, for dessert the next day. Yeah. So I why really, couldn't they come over for dinner? Yeah, exactly. I really didn't have time for whatever bullshit they had in mind. I asked them not to. They insisted. So I told them they can come over between 4 and 4.30 p.m. I was incredibly agitated when they showed up. They sat down and made snarky comments about how, quote, they needed an appointment to see her, their daughter. They finally showed me why they came. They wanted to give my husband and I plane tickets for an upcoming vacation. I thanked them, but I guess I wasn't appreciative, appreciative enough because they started scolding me. Again, bringing up the, quote, appointment time, telling me that I was wrong to think they would want to be around so many people on Xmas, how I didn't account for them, how ignorant a child I am, how I didn't appreciate their gift, etc. Yelling this shit at me like I'm a five-year-old. When I could finally interject and tell them I was sad because my family can't, sh my, my family can't show up, they told me to get over it and they left. <laughs> but I would never talk to them again. Yeah. That's like, the, that's, that's so similar to the last conversation i had with my mother <laughs> yeah, right, shit fun when i saw my mother the next day i was a little drunk and decided to forgive them in the moment no. however my mother simply couldn't let it be she hugged me when she saw me and whispered in my ear quote i love you but you're fucking piss you fucking piss me off <laughs> other shitty events have taken place since this th since this their house burned down, my brother started abusing, <laughs> sharing abuse stories, and my dad constantly talking shit about me to every family member that would listen at every single event that followed. I don't really talk to them anymore, and I feel terrible about it. No. They have done so much damage to my mental health that seeing, talking yeah. to them regularly left me, leaves me spinning for days. Yep. My great aunt keeps telling me that I have to be a bigger person. No. I just don't have it in me. I don't like them. They are not good people, but yeah. they are my parents and I feel a lot of shame and guilt. Nope. Am I the asshole for not attempting to repair my relationship with them? No, honestly, fuck them. Yeah, fuck them. Straight up, fuck them. Dude, uh, it, it sucks though because the reality is those are the only parents you're going to have. Yeah, so it, it like, it sucks, but also fuck them. Like, holy shit. Well, yeah, that's the thing is really now at this point, what matters is your mental health and that they are being dipshits. And now they said that they love you, but you piss them off. Fuck them. Like, Jesus, that's abuse, man. Fucking. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's difficult for me to determine what is and isn't abuse. You know? I, I think that's like, I mean, I, I, don't I know. think I it's like a shitty thing to say. I think the entire situation in context is abusive yeah i think definitely like it uh, definitely reminded me a lot of like how my mom would like show up <laughs> at places and just start causing conflict and would, yeah. it would uh, say that it's because she's like expressing her feelings and you know all this shit and uh you know uh, 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 but then she wouldn't listen to anybody else's feelings and the fact that they're like, it's too many people. Why would you think that we would want to come? You need to be more accommodating to us. I'm like, you haven't been accommodating to your own mother. Yeah. Like, well, Jesus. Why do you think I should... I'm modeling your behavior. I'm not being accommodating to you at all. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Yeah, because you're not accommodating your own fucking mother. Yeah. So I'm not going to accommodate you. And um, I don't know. I think there's a lot of the problem with these people is that there's a lot of manipulation that could go on. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. When you have conversations like that, it's very like, well, I'm doing what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. Well, don't you want to break the cycle? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you want to take care of me, center me in your life? And it's just the only way to stop that from happening and to stop your mental health from further deteriorating is shutting the door. Yeah. But it sucks because and you want to have yeah. parents. But then also, like, the cost of having parents is constantly being berated and every little thing you do is wrong in their eyes. Yeah. So it's like, fuck them, you know, like... And then now comes the grieving time. The reason you feel so bad is because... You're grieving the loss of your parents. Because... And you're grieving the parents that you never had. True. Because you're yeah. never going to have the parents that you want. Yeah. Shit. And that just is the truth. And I wish parents could see that where they're like, oh, you know what? I am an, impor am an important person in my kid's life. I just fucked it up so bad. Yeah. That now they don't even want to talk to me. But no, they have too much pride. You know, they have Yeah, because people can't feel bad about themselves. Yeah. Because they're two prideful idiots.
I don't know. I just keep right. Every time this happens, the Carlin quote comes to hand, you know, parents are people. They, they have, you have to earn respect, you know? Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. yeah. Yeah. That's the same. And, and you know, some people really think like, no, because they're your parents. They sacrificed all this stuff for you. Blah, blah, blah. That's the bare minimum. That's the bare minimum. When you decide to have a child, shelter, clothing, respect for your child. Yeah. Is the bare minimum. Exactly. Yeah. And if you don't, and if you anything, don't yeah, get flowers for that. Exactly. Again, respect is earned. God, I remember having a conversation with my brother where he, I was talking about the issues I had with our mom and he was like, have you ever had a child? You know, how do you know what it's like? And I'm like, I know what being a human being is like. Yeah. Yeah. I know what having empathy for other people is I like. I know what it's like to, you know, go, uh, go out into the world and interact with it. What? Uh, and of course, I didn't know to say this in the moment, but I wish I did. It was the, what about being a mom with a kid makes it okay to emotionally abuse a kid or even to be mean or even to be cruel? You yeah. Yeah. Purpose, like purposely like go out of your way to make your child feel bad and like cry Even when and you shit. have a problem yeah it's never the point with somebody else like you have a problem with someone you feel slighted adult adults don't go to other people and just say i want to make you feel bad i'm gonna make you feel bad by calling you pieces of shit maybe they do but it's not right and everybody knows that it's not right yeah. So what makes a mom different? Yeah. Onto a child. What makes it different? Yeah. It should be it should be significantly different. God, man. That's what I think. So what I don't do know. Think? I don't, I don't know. think you're the devil. Uh, yeah, you're not the asshole, no. You're no, you're no. fine. You're fine. Honestly, I feel you too. Solved it. I solved it. Next story, Sarah. Hell yeah. This is from Bird, They, Them. Am I the asshole for telling my parents my older brother should be institutionalized? Ooh, uh, I mean... Trigger warning, violence. All right, let's go. Let's fucking go. Okay. I, 18, live with my brother, 21. Exactly a year ago, my parents found out my brother had been living in his car for two months after dropping out of college and had been all but disowned by all of our family on my biological dad's side. My mom and stepdad took him in, intending that he would stay in our apartment in the States and we'd fly back home after the summer so he could get back on his feet. We knew he had a temper, but we figured he was just moody and my biological dad's side of the family had their own issues, so in a sick way, it kind of tracked that they'd leave my brother hanging. Interesting. Okay. So I guess it's like, oh yeah, of course they will. Cause yeah, because they all have... Shit. Yeah, yeah. Um... What we didn't see coming was that after a minor misunderstanding via text about a completely benign topic, he had come marching into the apartment, threatening me and my mom with a knife for well over an hour. I was a minor at the time, so the state wanted to charge him for child endangerment. However, my mom got his record scrubbed under reason of insanity, and he was transferred to a psychiatric hospital for a month. Wait, only a month? That makes sense, yeah. Okay, all right, but okay, Jesus. Apparently he had done this before, but my biological dad just never told anyone and thought he could bury it by kicking him out. That's really a good, cool that's a good response. Good. <laughs> cool and fun of him. After- Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. You're n- oh my God. After that, he came to live with us. I was diagnosed with depression and anxiety and blah, 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 blah. I was diagnosed with depression and anxiety only two-ish months later and spent days without sleep, as did my mom, and the year has been a a horrific struggle for all of us. The deal was that we'd get him enrolled in school again, get him on meds to stabilize his moods, and after a year of living with us, he'd assimilate back into society. This did not go to plan. He stopped taking his meds after only a few more months, dropped out of his new school, and fell back into addiction. Oh, okay. Okay. My parents and I live in fear. I haven't invited my friends over to my house all year because I'm afraid of what he might do to them. And my family all sleep with our bedroom doors locked. Jeez. His sleep schedule is basically nocturnal, so we've all narrowed down the ideal hours of the day to be out of the house so we don't need to see him. Wow. 
He never picks a fight with my stepdad, but if I or my mom are ever unlucky enough to be caught in the kitchen or living room with him, he will find something to be angry about. The last time he shouted at me was over the way I didn't say hello fast enough. Uh, okay, All right. this is getting... Jesus. Um. He will go into frenzies over the smallest things and tell my mother to unalive herself over something as small as an ant in his bedroom. My mom gets really gets the worst of him. It's officially been a year since his episode with the knife, and my parents are acting like there's still time for him to go back to how he was before. That wasn't the plan. When I heard them telling my aunt and uncle about how he just needs to get socialized, I finally snapped and said in front of everyone that my brother is da- is a dangerous and entitled monster who needs to be institutionalized for his own health before he gets arrested or worse. He needs to get clean, take his antipsychotics, and have a regular routine as we and we as a support system for him have failed at every turn. He's only getting more aggressive and we're all miserable like this. My mom told me he just needs time and that my quote unquote real brother is still there somewhere. Bro, it's been a year. What the f- No, wow. Uh, Jesus. That is so sad. Man. My stepdad told me I just need to learn to tell him what he wants to hear so he doesn't come after me so often. That's not a great response. I What the fuck? (laughs) That's pretty bad. I can't believe this. Am I really wrong here? You are exactly correct You're here. the most correct. Yeah, you are the most correct any person ever in the world could be because, yes, you said the correct things that you need to do to help your brother. You're the only one that's actually doing anything or even suggesting anything to help your brother. You, Your parents are living in denial. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can I say? I don't know about the word monster. I that's monsters, my only critique. Monster is probably the word. Not a great thing. But he just it's. When you say stuff like uh, he gets, it tells your mom to unalive herself because of an ant in his room, he has significant problems. Yes. That's yeah. not just like jerk hole behavior. That is, there's something that's much a, deeper. A yeah. Bi- uh, that's a level that is like something needs to, he needs to go to a doctor. Yes. Yeah. And you're, you're right in that sense. You're, you're, you're right there about, yeah, monster's a strong word and not the right word. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, fucking... I, everything else you, you got completely on the thing. Yeah, he's you're being you're enabled. The, you're the most correct person in that room in that time. He needs uh, to go long-term into, like, a uh, institution so that he has somebody there telling him you need to take your meds every day. Yes. And, yeah, eventually then he'll, he'll, he'll come out. He'll be out. able to, yeah, assimilate back into society. Yeah. It, yeah. You, you, but you have to go through that rehabilitation and, like, uh, in a place where it's actually gonna fucking... He needs to take his meds. Yeah. Exactly. And he needs to be diagnosed correctly. Yes. He needs to be diagnosed with something, because uh, you didn't even say what he was diagnosed with. Like, yeah. He needs to have a diagnosis, and he needs to be going into treatment for something, because this is not normal behavior. Quote, unquote, normal. You know, well, whatever yeah, it's it not, is. Yeah, it's not, uh, it's not, uh, <laughs> I, I guess, he's a person I don't know how to describe it, but. who is living without the tools to be a normal person, and it's yeah. very frustrating, and I understand that point of view but also it's unsafe for you and you should be mad at your parents you should be mad at your parents and uh, i i mean find a friend's couch to crash on maybe if if you're at the point where you're like uh, you you're planning out your schedule of when you can be out of the house because you know bad. yeah uh so i you need to protect yourself uh first and foremost uh sadly you know because like it's not a your parents are enabling this, uh, 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 whatever it happens to be, you know? Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a difficult thing, but. Also, I'm sorry it went like that. All right, Jeff Winger. <laughs> so yeah. sorry I did that. That's so rude of me. But I didn't know what else to do. This and I wanted to, before you behavior. said everything <laughs> that you, before you said everything that you said is correct, I wanted to be like, okay, hold on. The monster <laughs> thing is a little crazy. But uh, no, I get it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I just, get I, it. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very much like, yeah, no, you're totally right, dude. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, not the asshole. Um, I don't know what resources you need. I'd look into it. I'd, please. Oh, I, God, I, I, don't I don't know. know man. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Fuck. Whatever you got to do, do it. 
I mean, I yeah, I would just be like, if an, if another incident occurs, I would just have nine one one on speed dial or something. Yeah, maybe not the cops, but like it's social services. Yeah, social services. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, yeah. If like, cops come involved, the gun's gonna be shooting pretty quick. <laughs> guns come a tooting, you know. Yeah, exactly. Especially with like a fucking yeah, because if, if you're holding a knife and you, you're uh, that's they can see that a weapon, and you get a bunch of trigger yeah, happy not the cops. fucking blues. That'll get your brother suits. dead. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, no, try to, yeah, find those mental health services that are available to you, and... Weirdly enough, it sounds like there was one time where my roommates... It was at the old house with all the cats. Oh, yeah. There was one time where I used to work until, like, really late at night, like, 3 a.m. I came home, and there were a bunch of people, like, in the house that I had never met before, and the house, all the lights were on, which is very strange. Everybody usually was asleep by that time. And I just bought this bottle of Coquito from my... Oh my, yeah, I remember this. From my fucking coworkers. That's what happens in Florida. If you know someone near Christmas who makes oh, coquito, yeah. you buy coquito. And 2019 it's before COVID. Nice. Fucking delicious. It's Puerto Rican eggnog and it's amazing and it's alcoholic and it's great. Um, so I I I brought this into the house and there were a bunch of people I'd never met before. And I was at this point in my life where I was just going with the fucking flow, bruh. And my roommate goes, oh, um, our friend had a mental health uh, breakdown today and he has, um, forgot what it was called, but it was basically like he was hyper aggressive mm. and he would just constantly like try to f- find conflict wherever he could. And we're trying to get him to fall asleep in our other roommate's room who is on vacation and um, he's going to be sleeping across the the hallway from you. Are you okay with that? We told him not to go into your room at night. <laughs> and I was at this point where I was just like, whatever, man. <laughs> I was like, I don't give a fuck. And it was really funny because the guy was nice-ish. He was an <laughs> asshole to his friends. But to me, he had never met me. So he came out and kept talking to me about stuff. And then his friends who knew what he was up to would be like, stop talking to Sarah. <laughs> Go to bed. <laughs> it's really like, you need to go to bed. It's 3 a.m. Go to bed. And he would be like, what's up? What's that? I'd be like, it's Coquito. He's like, I don't know what that is. And then he would just keep finding, trying to find something. Something to talk about. Yeah. But I was going with the flow. So I was like, okay, yeah, sure. Whatever. Whatever you, whatever you say, bud. <laughs> so he couldn't find one. And then he would just go to his friends and start an argument. And this happened until like 5 a.m. Jesus. And then finally he went to sleep and uh, they figured out how to get him home to his parents the next day. Mm. I, just, I don't know. That's a fun time in my life. It just reminds me of that where it's, but maybe it's a more catatonic state with this guy. Yeah. I wonder probably, if he yeah. has something like that where he just needs aggression. Maybe. You know what I mean? Huh. And I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't even know. know if what I did was the correct thing to do in that situation. I probably we're not should professionals, have been, so I just want to state that again we're for the not, record. I have no idea. I would just probably try not to interact, but I know that's hard. True. I get that. I don't know. It just really reminded me of that guy. Mm. Where I'm like, I you know, maybe I have a little empathy. <laughs> <laughs> or don't. Actually he brandished a knife at you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, actually don't yeah. do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, solved it. Solved it. Next story. Kind of, not really at all. Oh, totally solved it. All right, this next story comes to us from Night Fury underscore Dream. She, they. That's a dope ass name. Good name. Yeah, I like the underscore. I like Night Fury. <sighs> Are you ready, Sarah? Are you ready for the age gap story of the night? Oh, yeah. Are you ready? Are you I, fucking I know what ready? this is. I know it's the dad. Oh, are you, are you ready, though? It, it better be the dad, yeah. Am I the asshole for thinking my dad is a creep for having an age gap relationship with someone with my same name? Okay, that's weird. Night Fury? He searched <laughs> for that. That's a little, <laughs> that's that's a little, little on the nose, little on the I nose. think. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hey. Hey, guys. Hey. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta do the great <laughs> Jorgenton. Hey guys, first off, thank you. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Say it like normal. All right. Hi guys. First, I can't. I can't. I got, I'm just thinking. Now. Hey, guys. hey guys. Okay. All right. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, listener. 
Hi guys, first off, thank you for taking the time to read my story. I have been, been, I've been binge watching your podcast for the past two days, and I'm happy to still find an LGBTQ plus podcast. Hell yeah, dog. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Also disclaimer, I'm going to therapy and getting help, but I just need to know if I'm not overreacting with my story. You're probably not, honestly. <laughs> so I, a 24 year old, going to turn 25 next month, congrats. Congrats. Recently visited my mom and my younger sister a couple days ago. We all went out to have brunch and did a little bit of shopping later. Nice. My younger sister and I were catching up, talking about family drama and what was what and whatnot, when she dropped this creepy update about father and how he recently got a new girlfriend with the same name as me. Ew. Now, before I progress further, I need to give some context about my family. Mm. My parents have been divorced for over a decade, reasons because he cheated on my mom. My father has a history of dating toxic women with kids, except my mom, she's great. <laughs> He also has a habit of completely ignoring or forgetting about his actual kids, but would rather focus on his new family. The new family starter. Yeah. Mm. He sees nothing wrong with this issue, and my sisters and I have had multiple discussions about this, but he refuses to change his ways. Cool and good. Even after he quote-unquote promised to do better. The final straw for me was when the father tried to invite his ex-girlfriend to my birthday when my BF already paid for the tickets to take me to the art museum that I wanted to go to. I only wanted my immediate family and my boyfriend to, uh, to attend the trip with me. I didn't feel comfortable with my dad's ex-girlfriend because she clearly didn't like me. Oh. I met her in person one time and the whole time his ex-girlfriend would only talk to my father and barely tried to talk to me, no. let alone get to know me. I thought it was a language barrier between me and his ex. She speaks Spanish and I barely speak any. But no, she did the, did the exact same thing to my older sister and my sister can not speak Spanish. So I felt no need to invite her onto my birthday trip if she clearly didn't like me. I tried to tell my father I only wanted it to be a family event, and I didn't want her there. He didn't like that and got mad at me for being selfish. It's your fucking birthday. It's your birthday. My father is 50 years old and refuses to change, so I cut ties from the bastard. So every now and then, my mom or my younger sister would update me about my shitty father. Now back to the creepy update with my father's... Re now back to the creepy update. My father recently got a new girlfriend, same name as me, but will not disclose out of privacy, but my, main, my name starts with the letter R. Okay. And to give you even more context behind the importance of this name, I was named after my aunt, who passed away before I was born. It was my father who was the one who gave me the name, so it's even more creepy that he is dating a woman with the same name as me and named after his deceased sister, who is also 13 years younger than him. New girlfriend is 37. Oh, God. The new girlfriend is around the same age range as my older sister. So lately I've been freaking out about this information because I know how my father is with women who have kids. I honestly believe he looks for women who have kids to fill some empty void he has inside him. And I personally feel like he might be dating this new girl with my name to replace me, maybe? So it's gotten me paranoid. Is he actually dating this woman because he loves her? Or wants to be a father figure around her? Reason why I'm freaking out is because I'm going through the process of confronting my past trauma with my groomer. I have spoken to my therapist about this, and she agrees that it's weird. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah it's weird. I, it's weird. I don't understand how my father could date someone around the ages of his eldest daughter, my half-sister, and let alone with the same name as me. Like, I really can't wrap my head around this. <laughs> I've told some of my other friends about this, and they all agree it's weird. It's but some weird. Of, yeah, but some of my other relatives don't think it's a big deal. No. Maybe I'm overthinking no. or overreacting. I want to know this uh, This sentence has three question marks. Or overreacting? <laughs> I don't know if it's... I don't know, dude. It's wild. <laughs> <laughs> you're awesome. You're, yeah, no, you're, you're great. Yeah. My older sister thinks I'm being too paranoid and thinks I should just ignore my dad and move on. She also says that, quote, they're, <laughs> that they're both consenting adults. There's oh, not much you can do up. about it. I hate that. <laughs> they're consenting adults. Shut the, <laughs> fuck, shut the up. fuck up. To which she is right, but it feels like she is undermining my feelings and not understanding how this affects me. Yes. Yes. I love my sister and respect her wish for me to just move on, and I am trying, but hearing my, about no. my dad and this new relationship has gotten me all paranoid lately. Yeah. I'm sorry the story is long, so long, but I felt no. I needed to give as much context for everyone to understand why I think my father is a creep. You're he good. Is. He is a creep. Yeah. But honestly, maybe I'm overreacting and want to hear your opinion about age gaps. <laughs> <laughs> and is it appropriate for your relatives to date people who are the same age as you and the same name as you? You're so awesome, dude. I love you. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, it's fucking it's weird. Bad. It's it's fucking strange. I have straight up been on Tinder and swiped left on guys that I would have swiped right on because they have the same name as my father. Yeah. And my brothers. Yeah, I think it would be weird to date anyone with my fucking uh, straight. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't date anyone with like names of my relatives. Obviously, like Jesus. Yeah. Then I find out that someone I like a fifth cousin's name Sarah. I'm like, fuck. I 
mean, yeah. I don't know. I but like, I, yeah, no. Your it's... dad, your daughter, and your sister is pretty intense. I, yeah, I think what, yeah, if you're named after. <laughs> Yeah, that's weird. That's, that's just weird. Really that's weird. just weird. Yeah, and like I, 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 yeah, no, I get the feeling of thinking it's overreacting. I don't know how much. I don't think I would say it's overreacting because I think it's weird and I think it's kind of gross and I think you know maybe uh, it's not great to do any of that. And I think your sister's a little bit uh, uh, not ignorant, but um, uh, just has her own opinions of this. And yeah, it's weird. It's weird a weird opinion. opinion. About it. Yeah. It's a strange. I think. And listen, thank Christ, your therapist also thinks it's weird because it is. Oh, that's a good therapist. I I think the only thing you can do in this situation is to tell your mother and sister, "Hey, I am setting a boundary that as long as my father is dating this woman with my name and your age and your age, I do not. I don't want to hear, to hear about, about it. I don't want to hear anything because it makes me deeply uncomfortable. Yeah, because it is weird. Because <laughs> sometimes it's, I mean, because like, what is the goal, right? Yeah, to right. know why he's doing it. Yeah, right. Like, I don't know. Like, I think it's weird. You can't stop him from doing it. The That's way, the problem. I just want to say for the record. Yeah, technically it is consenting adults. You're still gonna get judged for it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, fuck. What are you talking about there? I think it's weird to be like, guys, they're consenting. Guys, guys, guys they're guys. consenting. There's no minor here. Nobody was fucking talking we about that. We were talking about that. Yeah. Nobody was talking about that. We we're talking about weird adult behaviors. We're talking behaviors. about weird adult behaviors. 13 years apart. It's it's crazy to me how people really assign morality with law. Yeah, no, that's not the same. They're not the same thing, guys. They're not. We can talk about morality in every other instance, even if it's not you know, a law. It's yeah. just, and I really do feel like, <laughs> like that TikTok that went viral where I was literally like, yeah, I, my dad died when I was 19. And then a bunch of people were like, Hey, it's consenting adults. You know what that sounds like to me? It sounds like you're saying to me, Hey, shut the fuck up. You don't know <laughs> yeah, what you're what fucking talking about. Yeah. And I want to say, fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Because that's fucking bullshit. As somebody is telling you, Hey, this is my experience. I think this is a bad thing. And you go, hey, my mother was in one. Hey, my <laughs> mother was in one. She was so happy all the time. Are you telling me that only Italian mobsters are? <laughs> I don't know. I just want to do a funny voice because I don't want them to be real. <laughs> I don't want them to be real. I don't want a these real... people that really exist. And I think that's the problem with opening the Pandora's box of age gap relationships is then all of a sudden your sister comes. It's like zombies. Yeah, it's your like, yeah. Your sister they're... comes out and says, they're consenting adults. I'm going to snack on your flesh. Yeah. And the snacking on the flesh and becoming a zombie is, am I the wrong one? No, you're not. Yeah. You're not. You're not the fucking wrong one. Don't worry. God, that's so fucking funny, though. <laughs> everyone else is wrong. But everyone, you, yeah. <laughs> don't yeah. fucking worry about it. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah. I would just be like, bro, I don't even want to hear that, it. Set that boundary. Yeah, don't, don't, yeah. Because <laughs> you don't need to, like, traumatize yourself again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's no like, use yeah, in doing that. Fuck that. Oh, my God. No. You deserve better. Jesus. No, you do have to, I mean, you know, do what your therapist, if your, ther do what yeah, your do therapist, do whatever your therapist says. says. Yeah. But I would be like, as somebody who is about to go into therapy, but not in therapy right now, I would be like, I can't even deal with that. Can't even, not. I can't even deal with that. I don't even know if that's no. healthy, healthy, but it makes me not spiral. Yeah, exactly. So it's got to so be like, something good. Yeah. Maybe. So. I don't know. I don't, yeah, you're not the asshole, though. No, I don't think so. No. Yeah. I don't, I don't even think you're, yeah, you're not overreacting. No. You're never going to know why that guy's doing that. Yep. <laughs> It sucks, but... He's just gonna be a fucking weirdo for the rest of his life, and you're just gonna be like, all right. Hey, that's a weird guy. That's a weird fella. That's a weird, weird fella guy. over there. God, I wish my dad wasn't so fucking weird. God. <laughs> solved it. I Or make I up it. make up a conclusion. Make up a conclusion, and then stick to that in your head so it's solved. You know what I mean? Oh, I get you. Be like, yeah, that's why he wants to replace me. And he's a weirdo. What a fucking of that. creepo! What I a never creep. want to hear from him again. Yeah, and then move on. <laughs> then move on. Yeah. And then you don't have to think about it ever yeah. again. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. There you go. Visualize it on a cloud and watch it float away. <laughs>
Okay, now solved it. Now solved it. Do CB, the CBT on yourself. <laughs> and I really want to, like, if somebody's like, well, when they're two consenting adults, I think you should shut up. But if they're two consenting adults, what should she do? Change her name? Yes. If she wants that man, yeah. you should spend $200 and change your fucking name. Exactly. That should have been a boundary. Yeah. I'm actually saying Don't that. change your name, listener. Have that other person. No, that's name. your name that you're given to by this creepo man. Yeah. Jesus. But she should change your name to be with your father. Yeah. I agree. That's how weird that is. Anyway, not therapists again. This is from Mars. They, he. Am I the asshole for wanting to cut my mother out of my life because she hates my partner? Trigger warning, misgendering. No. Nope. Next door. <laughs> All right. See ya. All right. I, 22 non-binary, have been dating, let's call him Paul, 23 male, for over a year. It's been pretty so- a pretty solid relationship, and we've seen the best and worst of, of both our families. In November 2021, we left our home 500 miles away to help my mother and siblings out because they were living in a motel, and we figured some extra money coming in would help her transfer back to a better job. Me and my mother are over-the-road truck drivers. She was doing a very local job, and it wasn't really helping her or my siblings. This This was before I got my CDL, so I was working at a spicy adult store, plus Waffle House, and Paul got hired at an Olive Garden after many failed interviews elsewhere. Uh, represent for Waffle House? Yeah, Waffle House represent. Waffle House slaps, and God bless you both. Okay. Uh, they were very strict about uniforms, so it took a while to even get the money for it. My mother was upset during this period because he, quote unquote, uh, because, quote unquote, he wasn't pulling his weight when her son, 17, was completely jobless. My partner also used to get in the middle of our family fights because he wanted everyone to just stay calm, and that pissed my mother off the most. They said it wasn't his place to back me up, even when they would dig at me for being neurodivergent or too sensitive. I.e., if I was overstimulated, she'd make jokes or fuss about me being R-worded. I don't know. Okay, it was actually censored, so I don't know if it's R-worded or like the R-slur. Uh, it's probably the R-slur. I bet it's the R-slur. Yeah. But it ends with a D. Me being R-slur? I don't know. I don't know. I think, but okay. I don't know. Uh, she managed to switch back to an over the road job and it's been, and it's gotten a little easier on her end. We left them in December after she transferred jobs. Now, whenever I ask for a little help, she berates me beforehand and tells me she has no issue helping me, but she despises my partner and she doesn't want to feel like she's helping him too. Oh my god. That's, yeah, what the fuck? That's kind of crazy. Yeah. She brings up our hiccup in our relationship when we split for a few days over pronouns, which he says was the stupidest shit he's done and respects me and my identity 100%, even though she's still dead names and misgenders me. It's a constant argument, but am I being too sensitive? I tried dropping her before, but my grandfather died immediately after forcing me back oh. after forcing me back into contact and it's made me question whether life is too short to tell her to fuck off again um (laughs) well that's up to you fam uh, yeah that's what i mean that's your that's your decision yeah it is your decision but also like (laughs) you should have to deal with her dead naming and misgendering yeah that's the thing i yeah that's not what the fuck (laughs) jesus christ man it seems like she's upset that somebody is sticking up for you (laughs) yeah Especially in terms she gets upset that he is going to respect back you up. Yeah, respect you. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's, yeah. I, why, the, Jesus. I. It's It seems to me like a classic open and shut case of, like, a mom really has control over her um, child. And doesn't want to see them get in a healthy, in a healthy relationship. Because then they think they might lose their child, which sometimes can be solved with a, hey, you're not losing me. I'm just living my life, mom. Sometimes. But then also sometimes it can't be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, I, I don't, Jesus Christ, I don't even. I'm sorry about your grandfather. I am sorry about that. But I do, I, I, uh, I do get the impulse to cut your mom off because. Well, yeah, what? Yeah, I think... well, yeah, you're just going to live the rest of your life being disrespected all the time. And it really does suck because sometimes that's the choices that you're given is 
you know, if you don't think that your mother is going to recognize that she's doing anything wrong, then she's probably not going to change anytime soon. Yeah. If you don't see that happening, which I don't know because we don't know your mom. Yeah. So like, I, I mean, yeah, I'm never going to know fully. So like, I, Jesus, I don't know. You definitely don't. You never deserve to get dead named or misgendered and no, you don't deserve not. to get called the R slur or be told that you're going to be R worded or anything, but yeah. you know, it, I, yeah. it's fucked up. That's really fucked up. And you deserve a partner who is going to stick up for you. Yeah. And I mean, the good thing about your partner, even though he did fuck up your pronouns, yeah, is that he did come around and say, "Yeah, oh, hey, which, I mean, that yeah, was really stupid of me." That's the thing is that there is, there always is, like, um, there always is room for like the the want of like uh, rehabilitation or like coming around and being a better yeah. person. But if the person that if a person won't come around to be a better person. That's shitty, you know, and the that's first step to rehabilitation is recognizing that you did something wrong. Yeah. I mean, you know, the first step is solving a problem is you have a problem, you know, like, yeah. And that's if you can't even get past that first step and your mom can't get past that first step. Then I, it's like a ticking time bomb of when is enough going to be enough? Yeah. When's what's going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back? You yeah. Know? Um, I don't know. Fuck, man. Damn. Yeah. Shit. Hmm. Fuck. Fuck. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, yeah, that's up to you. That would, nobody else can tell you to cut off your mom. You know, as that's much true. as we say that, you know. Yeah, I know we said that. Yeah, but like <laughs> we said all the time. But that's a personal. That is, decision. That's always going to be a personal decision. And yeah. then, like, yeah, you know, fucking yeah. And I mean, uh, you are right. Like, <sighs> you're right. And sometimes it is like if you do truly believe that life is too short, right? You know, and it is. It is too short. Yeah. To um not have the people that you love in your life but also sometimes it's too short to sacrifice your own happiness yeah and for like, anyone yeah hmm. and then not even just happiness but people actively doing harm to you yeah you know and that is an act of harm like every single time that happens yeah and well that's a balance you know hmm. it's can i deal with my can i work with my mom to get her to a point where she will someday respect me or at least not even use pronouns when talking to me or something like that? Or, or do you... Do I deal with, you know, in the rest of my life, not speaking to my mom? Yeah. Or the rest of her life, not speaking to my mom? And, uh, yeah, that's a decision you had to make. When I decided to stop talking to my mom, it was, a uh, in the moment, it was like a rash decision, and then afterwards it became a solid decision of... Yeah, I can't do this anymore. And I knew in that moment I could possibly not talk to her for the rest of my life. And I accepted that because of the level of I don't know that I'm going to be mentally stable if mm. I continue to have my mother in my life. That's the level it got to. And that's the level I still think if I got back in contact with my mom three years later, I still think that it would be terrible. <laughs> I just, if I got back in contact with my mom, I think my mom would be like, oh my gosh, thanks, blah, blah, blah. And then immediately it would turn into, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. And I would just, I would mentally break down. Hmm. I would not be very stable and not be a productive uh, adult and not be able to give as much empathy as I am able to right now because yeah. I would be constantly drained. <laughs> And yeah, that's, yeah. that's what sucks is like, you know, it sucks to be put in that position and I don't envy you because I don't know. I didn't like being in that position either. Hmm. Shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Fucking solved it. Solved it though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I can't. All right. Jesus. <laughs> Fucking. How do, how do... I just wish mo moms were better. Yeah. Sometimes I just wish moms would just be better. This next story comes to us from Anonymous, she, they. Oh, shit. Am I the asshole for publicly roasting my ex? <laughs> Maybe, but I don't think so. <laughs> Hi, friends. I found you through TikTok, and I love listening to your commentaries on stories like this. Thank my you. story is a little long, so feel free to edit it as needed. Never. Am I the asshole for publicly roasting my ex? 
I, currently 25 female, dated my ex, currently 26 male, back in 2018. While we were in the, quote, honeymoon phase, he had made a comment about how it was like he had, quote, wished me into existence. Now, I let this slide at the time, but it always made me feel strange because it felt a bit like a manic pixie dream girl type fantasy for him. That's what I got, too, from that. Our breakup was particularly explosive as I had spiraled into a psychosis as a result of bad medication and coming to terms with the fact that I had been abused by my previous boyfriend. We were oh. both in a bad place mentally, and since I've since forgiven him for cutting me out of his life. More recently, I ran into him at my place of work, and we decided to meet for coffee to catch up. He said a month after he said meet up that he preferred to keep a, quote, healthy distance between us, but still proceeds to lurk on my social media. Now, I should explain that I do keep tabs on who has access to my social media profiles. As previously mentioned, I was in an abusive relationship, and I'm adamant that my abuser stays out of my life. On to the meat of the story. I was mindlessly scrolling one night when I saw an article about Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly. The article is about Megan claiming she, she thinks she, quote, made MGK by manifesting her pertinent, perfect partner. Partner. Right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. I, I, violently remembered, I violently remembered that comment my ex had made, had a giggle, and sent it to my private Instagram group chat saying, lol, I remember my ex saying something about, quote, wishing me to existence. How weird. About 10 minutes later, I looked at my Instagram and realized not only had I accidentally posted it publicly, <laughs> but that he had seen it. <laughs> Nerd, you don't know how to use Instagram. The one that said it, though, yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. Well, I didn't name him. If you knew, know me or him personally, you'd know that he's the only person I've dated besides my abuser, and it wouldn't be hard to figure out which ex it was. It was also his birthday the night this all occurred. <laughs> his friend did block Oops. me after the incident. I can only assume he, he told them. But he still follows me. I sent him a messing message apologizing for my comment, but he left me undelivered for a few days and never responded. Am I the asshole? I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't the, really know. I don't the, care. <laughs> what's the harm in saying, yeah. lol, my ex said this thing that Megan Fox said? Yeah. What? So? What's wrong with that? Yeah. Own up to it, you fucking weird romantic use freak. It, yeah, use it as a compliment. You're getting compared to Megan Fox. Yeah, she's yeah. hot. She got toe thumbs, <laughs> but it's okay. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I guess not the yeah, not the asshole. It's fine. Yeah, yeah what whatever. the fuck? Just I mean, Who, why would he? Really, the real shame here is that you don't know how to use Instagram. That's the real. The real shame is that he's so con uh, insecure. Yeah, that like he's gonna leave you on red. <laughs> Some comment that he actually made is gonna. I don't know. This happens all the time. I yeah. feel like to us, where we'll be. I <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I really do think about it all the time. Where I'll be like, this guy from there. or... Every single time I share an anecdote from my life on my own podcast, yeah, right. I worry that someone is going to DM me and be like, "How dare you speak about me?" And it happens all the time. It happens all the time, but it's never the person you expect. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. It just I don't know. I'm like, "You said it. Yeah, you did you it. You said it and you did it." Yeah. I'm talking about it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You expect me to be silent for the rest of my life? <laughs> Why would I be silent? You did that. Yeah. Everyone's talking about everyone all the time. Yeah. You know, at least, yeah, at least we have the decency to be public. <laughs> it's a little... But yeah, I guess I can't call you the asshole because then I would be an asshole every time for the past 128 episodes. If you're an asshole, then we're all three assholes. So yeah. uh, join the club. Join you're the club. Friend. We're all friends here. Yeah. <laughs> You know, fuck. I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it is very manic pixie. It is, yeah, I think so. I think it's a little stupid, but whatever. It's fine. Yeah. I don't know. It's not like you, you're. <laughs> What's really the harm in it, honestly? Yeah. It's not. Yeah. If you were lying, you'd be the asshole. But yeah. if that's a real thing that happened. Whatever. Fuck it. Fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. Not the asshole. What is he gonna get clowned on now by all your friends? Because then you got bully friends at that point. Yeah, if you're yeah, if your friends are like going to his messages telling him to ha, kill himself. Ha, you said that. Yeah. <laughs> like okay. Then he maybe has some shitty friends, but like Yeah, but then he should also just be like a not engaged. Okay. Yeah, like yeah. Be an adult. <laughs> I don't know. You didn't say he had a small dick. <laughs> you know, you didn't say you didn't, that. like yeah, you didn't send out his dick pics, you know, like yeah, yeah. dox him. Yeah, you didn't do much. <laughs> Send out his address to everybody. <laughs> Ironically, you did the the when people do this who are scummy and who do the like dick pics scenario. Yeah, the way they get out of it is by saying and by not mentioning the name of the person. So you ironically did get out of this in that scenario because you didn't mention his name. Yeah. 
So, I mean, okay, yeah. That's true. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, not the asshole, I guess. If he's accusing you of publicly humiliating him, I would be like, grow a pair. Come on, man. Yeah, it's a little You're like, the yeah, come on. Jesus, I've seen worse things. <laughs> that scene in Smiling Friends was like, is this really? No, I've seen worse things on the internet, man. <laughs> yeah, literally. So, I don't know. I, yeah, I guess not the asshole. <laughs> like, honestly, probably. But also, like, we probably don't have the best experience because we literally put our almost unedited conversations on the internet every week yeah so is when somebody says i said something that i didn't want to go on the internet and now everybody knows about it and they're gonna make fun of me i don't really have any sympathy because i do this every goddamn yeah. week this is the internet baby fucking ones and zeros you know what i'm saying you put a microphone in front of somebody's face they're gonna say the most embarrassing shit you've ever heard in your yeah, life yeah that's true yeah fucking um yeah yeah oh don't even get don't even i don't even want to mention my dms from all the people i know Calling me the the F <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, bro, dude, can you can you imagine mm-hmm. like fucking I I say on the podcast that I knew a bunch of white people that said the N word back in high school, and then they're going on their Instagrams being like, "That's gonna happen." Now, that's yeah. only gonna happen. Yeah, Joshua Chinlin has never told the truth ever once in his life. Okay, whatever. I don't know. I my you name know, isn't even Josh. Yeah, it's Greg. Kirkington. <laughs> oh, <get, laughs> Hey, hey guys. guys. Um no, like fucking but for no, sure. Yeah, no, like yeah, no, for like yeah. I don't know, maybe you shouldn't have said the N-word. I don't know. Shit. Bro, fucking people have told us to stop eating because they think we're too fucking fat. Do you think I'm gonna ever I'm ever going to be like, oh you poor baby. So you said something embarrassing in a relationship and it got put up on the internet. Yeah. Without your name on it. Without your name on it, yeah. So honestly, yeah, not that not the asshole. Do you in know my what opinion. it's fucking like? to have people you know from high school come up to you and be like i heard you have a podcast it's terrifying it's fucking terrifying i will say unironically i've only had good experience uh, mostly good experiences <laughs> same recently i've had good experiences uh three years ago um uh, can't can't swim the sharks <laughs> Well, I mean, but I, I will say I have also had good experiences, but I still get a panic attack. Oh, yeah. Same. Anytime anyone mentions my podcast, I'm like, fuck. oh, shit. Fuck me. Oh, fuck. What did you know? What do you know? Oh, I, about got a, me? I got a uh, what is it? Someone on Instagram from uh, when I worked at uh, Disney. Oh, uh, yeah. They, they sent something nice. It was, they, they, they liked it, but it was weird. It's weird. The idea that like, oh, yeah, TikTok is a global app. There's people that will recognize me. Yeah. That we know that yeah. are on it that are going to see us. Yeah. That don't follow us. Exactly. And yeah, that that don't follow us. That like, don't even that oh, know who I am, but don't realize I have a podcast. Like people out there from middle school that knew the worst, the worst the version, worst of, version me. of me. Yeah. Like, oh, I remember her when she used to wear fedoras to school. Oh my god, that was me. So yeah, no, yeah. So I mean, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. no, fucking, I don't know, not the asshole. No, no eh. I don't think Meh. so. Uh, maybe <laughs> I don't know. Not the asshole. I, I'm still. Gonna, I'm gonna. If I will are, make. We I are. will make fun of you for not for hitting the wrong button, though. It's the Spartacus rule. Yeah, I, I farted. I am also Spartacus. Yeah, I am Spartacus. Yeah. Everyone that watches this podcast is Spartacus. Anyone that's ever submitted a story is Spartacus. Exactly. Um. So this is from anonymous she/her. How do I get my parents to stop suddenly treating me like the golden child? Uh, okay. For context, I wasn't the golden child growing up. That was my older sister until recent years. So I'm 21 female, the middle child to parents that had kids too young. They have dropped the ball a few times as kids raising kids would, but they did provide us with a very stable life despite circumstances. That's That's good at least, yeah. My older sister and younger sister's birthdays were back to back literally the next day from each. Oh my God literally the next day from each other and they both loved big birthdays and didn't like to share oh no oh my god so when it was my birthday four months later there wasn't much they could do for me oh after i turned seven i was aware of our financial situation and stopped asking for parties i was always the sibling that could be left alone the quiet kid that my parents felt they could leave alone because quote unquote i was mature for my age your parents (sighs) groomers what the fuck I, 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 no, yeah, I've definitely heard that too. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, no kid, fucking yeah. god. Growing up, I was always compared to my siblings. For example, why I didn't like makeup like them? Why aren't my grades as good as them? To be fair, I never told them how much my older sister bullied me when they weren't around or at school, or how much I hate her. So they had no idea how much that kind of thing hurt. 
I think it really dawned on me how little they knew me when I was around 14. Jesus, I'm so sorry. I am very sorry, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> they got my sister's iPhones and got me things from a Christmas list I made when I was eight. What? Oh my god. Literally walkie-talkies in a magic kit. Oh my god. I sucked it up and just accepted that my parents and I love each other, but they just won't know me like that. Bruh, yeah, this makes me I'm so sad. I'm sorry, Jesus. This is just to give context what my relationship is like with them. So skipping a crazy long complicated story, my older sister has been more or less disowned and my parents have custody of her kid because of her crimes. Okay, All Jesus. Right? All right. My parents were very shocked, but me being her victim for years, I wasn't. <laughs> my parents have started therapy recently and have improved a lot and are good with my niece. My younger sister loves the kid, but doesn't want to help more than directly asked to, asked to, and I get that. I've tried to explain to my parents it's not the kid's fault, but it's not my little sister's responsibility to be a pseudo-parent to her either. My parents have been complaining ever since I first moved out that she doesn't do enough for the house and compare her to me. Oh, shit. Interesting. Jesus, yeah. I like taking care of things, cooking, taking care of my niece, checking on my grandparents, asking if people need anything well out. I try to explain she's not me, and I did those things because I like to, not because I had to. Things got tense, and my younger sister moved in with her boyfriend, and the where did we go wrong, you turned out great, what happened to them comments kept uh, keep being made to me, and I don't know how to make them stop. I have moved back because my visa has expired in the country I was staying in. I don't know how to uh, bring it up without really starting a fight, especially while I'm depending on them till I can move out again. Ooh, I would do therapy, fam. Yeah, no, therapy's your best bet. I shit. Um, yeah, because I don't know if you're depending on them. I don't know if I would even start that conversation. Yeah, but you do need to get a lot of shit out. You know, like yeah, you still a, yeah. need to talk about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you can, yeah, I would. I would recommend therapy at that point. And um, also, therapists can be problem solvers. They're not just there to be uh, listeners all the time. If you say yeah. like, I don't know what to do in this situation. You know, that's something that a therapist can start brainstorming with you. Like, what if you did this? What if you did that? What if you did yeah. that? So and then, and then you'll have the tools equipped if you wanted to bring it up. Like, oh, this is what I do. Yes. Yeah. And, and you know what possible scenarios X, Y, Z might happen, you know? Yeah, true. And so, you know, that's something that you could be like, hey, listen, this is a trend that you guys have where you compare us to each other and it's really not good and you shouldn't do that. And, you know, depending on how they are because i have no idea how they are if they're going to react to that or if they're even going to listen to you because it sounds like they don't listen to any of their kids yeah honestly so that's um it seems like they don't know anyone because they didn't know that your older sister was going to, was a uh person so in need that they ended up committing a crime yeah because like yeah should, crime is you know like that, most crimes are made like you know like what is it like when you're or in your need of in need of resources, you know, so or like mental health issues, or, or mental health issues, stuff like that. You know, it's a it's a yeah, you know. So I don't know, man. Yeah, we don't know what happened, but we don't know. But yeah, I think <sighs> therapy first. Yeah, they didn't know your your older sister. They don't. They still don't know you, and they yeah. don't know your younger sister, which who or younger sibling, who is now going through what you went through. Yeah, which sucks. Hmm. Yeah, it does. I'm sorry. Yeah. Good. I would also maybe reach out to your sibling. I think you're uh, a great person for acknowledging. I think a lot of people sometimes would go through this and then get that validation from parents um, who deprive it from you for so long. Mm -hmm. They would go, oh, finally, my parents, you know, are giving me validation. Yeah. But I think you're being the good person and saying, well, my sister didn't do anything wrong. You know, mm, my yeah. sister still deserves to be her own person and yeah. not be compared to me. I think exactly. that's great. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah, that's nice. Hmm. Yeah. I think you deserve, you know, recognition for that. I think maybe also reaching out to your younger sister and being like, hey, what's up? How can I be a good sister yeah, to how, you? Exactly. You know? No, yeah, I agree. Hmm. <laughs> but it sounds like they're back on their bullshit. Yeah, honestly. You know? Yeah, even with all the, the therapy they're supposedly doing. The parents, yeah. Which, it's so easy to... It sucks. It really is easy to have, like, cognitive bias and, you know, just want to bring up shit that only bothers you in therapy, and then you have this, like, 
thing going on or they could be <laughs> I don't know they could be narcs who knows who we knows? don't know we don't know we don't know not professionals we're not professionals alright alright final story final story it is 2.30 in the morning god bless <laughs> I'm very tired mm -hmm. from anonymous she her am I the asshole for throwing away my bridesmaids homemade cookies Okay. Sorry in advance, this will be long. It's fine. I, 27 female, had my bachelorette, something I had been dreaming about for years a few mm. months ago. Most of my bridesmaids, bridesmaids attended with the exception of two who could not make it. One of the girls was my now brother-in-law's girlfriend of four years. Let's call her Scrooge, 28 female. Okay. I included her in my wedding because she and I had become pretty good friends by that point. She is a very introverted girl who doesn't have very many friends and is usually too shy to make conversation outside brother-in-law's family, okay. but she is still a pretty fun time when you get to know her. Well, the story is that my BFF, Scrooge, and I were all driving a two and a half hour drive to our Airbnb, but since we were the first car, we had, to, we had the majority of everything to decorate. Food and drinks, needless to say, it was a very packed car. I attempted to warn her we may have too much stuff, but she insisted on driving up with us instead of hitching a later ride with some other girls. Granted, she didn't know them very much, only meeting them once before. Okay. When we picked her up, she gave me a box of homemade cookies, which were extremely sweet and thoughtful. But when she saw the minimal amount of space, her attitude shifted, and she had an attitude the whole ride there. Mm. We ignored it and still listened to music and had a fun time. When we finally got to the Airbnb, we were unpacking the car. I had placed the box of cookies on the floor, and my purse fell on top of it. Oh. So the top of the box caved in a bit. I said, oh no, the cookies. Scrooge, can you grab them for me, please? Scrooge stated that she, she should probably have taped the paper box closed since it was the type that needs tape to be sturdy. Well, at this point, I am leaning onto my car with my knees on the passenger seat and began to back out of the car when I accidentally bumped her. Why she, why she was still standing directly behind me is a mystery. <laughs> she lost balance of the cookies and the box become, began to come undone and she was juggling the box like a cartoon. I tried to help and the box fell and most, if not all of the cookies, fell out onto the gravel floor. God. My heart broke. I felt so bad, and I knew that her baking those cookies was such a huge gesture for her. Oh. Immediately, I was bending down to help pick them up quickly, five-second rule, saying, sorry, oh no, oh my god, sorry, when she screamed out loudly, <laughs> what the fuck, Karina? I was shocked. She had never acted like this before. My BFF, who was pulling stuff out of the backseat, looked up very quickly, confused, and we made eye contact. It was an accident, a genuine accident. But when she screamed at me that way, as if I did this on purpose, yeah, I got weird. angry, yeah. so I laughed in her face. It was more of a, ha-ha, what the fuck? As I, started, as I stared her in the face and realized she was not joking, and I started again. I said, sorry, Scrooge, I did not do this on purpose? I was so confused and honestly hurt. I bent down and quickly picked up the cookies for it and told her, I'm sorry, I didn't know they were still, you were still behind me. Don't worry, they're fine. I'll still eat them. She scooped up the box and stormed inside, mumbling under her breath. My BFF and I were bewildered. We went inside to eat lunch and to avoid awkwardness, talked about what liquor we all, bought, we all brought. Hell yeah. She mentioned wine and I jokingly said, oh, don't let Scrooge on the white couch if she's got wine. I said this in, uh, that's, okay. I said this in an, as nice of a teasing tone as I could. Right. Reason, <laughs> reason why I said this is because one time she came over to my house and accidentally spilled some wine on my couch and rug. I wasn't mad about it. It's just that my humor and love language is to tease my friends and meant no harm by this. That's not a real love language. She called me out saying I was attacking her and I apologized and explained what I meant and that I meant no harm. It truly was a joke. I had made, just made a similar joke at my own expense saying to keep my sweets away from me because I might drop it. In hindsight, it was probably a bad time to make a joke. Yeah. Yeah. It was. As a professional, yes. <laughs> it was just so awkward. I get it, though. I understand. You just put your foot in your mouth. Yeah. yeah. Fast forward to later in the evening, the rest of the girls have arrived, and we're all drinking, laughing, and dancing. My BFF who drove grabbed a large handle of vodka, the bobble lightly hit the counter, and 30 seconds later, the handle shattered, as if someone shot the bottle with a bullet. Oh my god. Vodka exploded, exploded everywhere. It was insane. We were laughing, screaming, and scrambling. It spilled mainly on the kitchen, kitchen counter, right on top of the remainder of the cookies. Oh, God. Panicked, we quietly threw the rest away with only two surviving cookies. Holy shit. <laughs> she had stayed in the living room but clearly noticed and went upstairs around 10 p.m. to call her BF and complain and sulk. 
Needless to say, she had an attitude the rest of the weekend, refusing to do activities with the rest of the group and choosing to stay alone at the beach by herself and talking to her BF, to her boyfriend, my now brother-in-law, to complain. The issue went well into my wedding day and well after. Oh my God. So am I the asshole for knocking the cookies over and making a joke? I mean, for the joke? The, the I joke get you made. why you did the joke. That being said... Not great timing. Not great timing, but I get it because I've been awkward in that position it's before. It's awkward, yeah. And so you want to like start a joking nature because of what happened was just awkward. But I don't know how it's she not made great. It pretty clear that she was not having it. Yeah. But then also, like, I get it. It's your bachelorette party. Like, I would be mad. <laughs> I would. Be, yeah. I personally would be mad because I'm a mad person that somebody is trying to like be a victim. <laughs> It's, I mean, terrible. Yeah. it's terrible. It's terrible. That, that, yeah. It's not great. But like, yeah, it's like in a way, she's a little bit trying to make it about her. And I'm like, no, it's my bachelorette party. Also, y'all sound wild. Like breaking say, vodka, dropping cookies everywhere. At that point, once the vodka sh- like shatters <laughs> and douses the cookies in vodka, I would be laughing. Yeah, I would that be- would be a comedy of her. But I could understand like someone who worked all that time on those cookies. Yeah, it's I would important be upset to her. being upset. Yeah, and like I think my I'm weirded out by the name of Scrooge. I feel like that's a little okay. Yeah, it's a little like that's a little whoa. like you're kind of preemptively making it seem like eh. you're trying to make it seem like she's a a funny daddy, which I think which is I weird. think she is. I think yes, yeah, yes, I think but- yes. She just can't hang with y'all. That's it. Yeah. She's going to think that you're an asshole and you really can't do anything about it. Yeah. And I, I mean, she, yeah, she thinks that you're an asshole now and that's just what happens. And that's how it is. Yeah. That's how it is. If she like, okay, 20 years from now, she's still upset. That's a little wild. She's an asshole. I think maybe, yeah, I think maybe, <laughs> maybe a month or two tops you can be mad about it. But like, you know, I think at some point you need to move on. Maybe bake her some cookies. Yeah. You know, and be fucking, like, hey, listen, I'm so sorry. What I happened? Mean, yeah. I mean, I will say though, I, <laughs> it is, it is awkward. It is very funny. The idea that you're like, oh, don't spill wine on the kid. <laughs> That's, cr- you're That's crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> you're a, a fucking <laughs> wild I would totally kowtow to this woman, but you know what? You deserve you deserve that shit. Fucking you, you, Heike, you, you you're you the s- alpha. It's your bachelorette party, so why the <laughs> fuck not? Jesus, I respect you so much, but also, yeah, she's gonna think you're an asshole. After yeah, that. yeah, and like, I I can't really blame her that much, but like, it's it's kind of like um, I'm like, I mean, really? Okay, all right, okay, Sarah. So this is I like, I just this don't is, think it's that serious, though. It's not that serious. Do we not agree on? I think we don't agree on. I this. don't know. I think like I I I don't blame. I feel like I could I I emphasize with the idea that you worked hard to make something, but like also it's like no one's really at fault here. That's the thing in my head is like yeah, and I don't think anyone's re- at fo- uh, like at fault at all. If anything, the most at fault is maybe you for making the joke. Yeah, but and I, uh, I also I can understand somebody just saying the worst possible thing. I'm thinking because uh, of awkwardness. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like um I, in my head. I don't know this is where my mind goes. Obviously, with yeah. jokes. September 12, two thousand one, this bachelorette party happens, and yeah. then the cookie spill. And then you you have the wine, and then like, oh, don't put her behind a plane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you meant like the 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 Scrooge being like, Scro- this is the worst thing to happen all year. Well, that would be fucked up. So yeah, so like yeah, but I do I do kind of get the idea of like yeah, Scrooge is kind of making it about themselves a little bit. Yeah, because it's your bachelorette party. Like she should just be like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Uh, or she no, she shouldn't apologize, but she should be like, oh well, oops. Oops, yeah, try to, yeah. I think it's more of, like, that's just an incompatibility of, like, how... Personalities. Personalities, yeah, and I think that's really what that is at that point. Like, what, do you go to a bachelorette party thinking everything's gonna be sincere? Mm, that's true. Okay. Also, I'm like, it's a bachelorette party. Like, yeah. It's crazy shit's gonna crazy happen. Crazy shit's gonna fucking happen. That's wild that the craziest shit that happened was a bunch of cookies got ruined, man. By vodka. <laughs> Why wouldn't you eat the... It's just vodka. Vodka cookies, vodka infused cookies. I I thought about that too, but I'm like, wet cookies. Yeah, mush them up a little bit. Ew. Put them in <laughs> a blender. Gross. Yeah, don't 
mutilate the fucking cookies further. And then put them in ice cream. Okay. Yeah, mush them up with the vodka and then put them in ice cream. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there could have been more. Um, there could have been an attempt to save them. But I'm just thinking of that now. I think there were multiple attempts to save these <laughs> there cookies. Were, yeah, the, yeah, at getting them off the ground point, the five second. Yeah, at some point you gotta you gotta give up on something. Yeah, that's true. I think I legit just. I mean, I couldn't hang with somebody that didn't have a sense of humor like that. That's true. Because yeah. it's like, what? You're so serious. Come on. It's a little too serious. You're right. Yeah. Just a little bit. But I get that it's important and everything. But I just be like, man, it's fucking. Cookies. I don't know. I don't think anyone's really an asshole here. No, I don't think so either. Yeah. I think maybe sulking is a little bit like a teenager. Yeah. Because I'm like, what, on the wedding day, she's like, she can't get over the cookies I made. It's a wedding. It's a wedding. Yeah. Chill out. Chill the fuck know. out a little bit. But yeah, again, not the asshole. I don't think you're an asshole at all. I think in a, in the moment you were a little, you came off like an asshole. Yeah, you definitely, I think you could definitely come off as an asshole in that moment, but I don't think you're like an asshole asshole, you know? And if the other lady was like, she's an asshole, I wouldn't tell her like, no, she's not because I'm not going to tell her her feelings. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not. I personally don't think you are. But I could, I can understand someone thinking like in that scenario. Yeah. Yeah. And being upset about it. Because I've also been the too serious one that gets my feelings hurt. Yeah. Same. Like, yeah. You fucking, know? So. And I, it's not productive when somebody says lighten up, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so like, I don't know. I don't want to do that to somebody, but. I don't know. Yeah. Also kind of lighten. <laughs> yeah. Lighten up a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. Come and on. also, yeah. Like being up, being upset with the pack car. Yeah. No. Yeah. I feel like that's asshole. adulthood. You know what I mean? True. Yeah. Grown up. It's, it's grown up, baby. Laughing at the cookies when they get fucked up. Yeah. Speaking of cookies. It's the end of the show. It's the end of the show. And what cookies should be in the browser of your links? <laughs> Probably a podcast will save this relationship links. Sarah, what do you want to plug? Yeah, sure. So you can follow me on Twitter <laughs> at that so here in T-H-A-T-S-O-H-E-E-R-O-N on Twitter and Instagram and TikTok. It's all the same now, and I changed it so that it'll be easier for people to find. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Hell yeah. Rebrand. Hell yeah. Got my dumb face on it, so you'll be it'll be easy to find. Hell yeah, dude. Anyway, Josh, what about you? Uh Joshua Channel on Twitter, guiding Dim JC on Twitch. Not streaming, but you can still prime sub. Uh, podcast will save this on Instagram, EPWS here on TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, uh, EPWS here on Buy Me Coffee, yeah, Patreon, mm-hmm. and I think that's everything. I'm pretty sure that's everything. Yeah, that's, I'm fucking tired. Are you ready? To I'm go tired. Bed? Yeah, I'm ready to go to bed. But we got to do the intro first and an outro. We have to oh do the outro and the God. intro. There's no sleep for us. <laughs> that's Joe. Thank you for watching. Thanks. Bye. See you. Outro, outro, outro. I'll be upset if it was brownies. Because brownies, there's no saving. No, there's not. Yeah, I think brownies, I think I would, you know, I would have the right to be a little bit upset. All your brownies fall, and they're immediately, like, squished. You you can see the imprint. To me, it's the same to me. It's in the arms, arms of the angel starts playing in your head. Curb your enthusiasm theme place. See, and it really, at the same time, that's interesting because that's all different personality things. Because I would be like, well, at least we're not dead. I'll be like, fuck, fuck, brownies were the most important thing. I lost my brownies. Now, if there were weed in the brownies, I'd be upset. Oh my god, I have a story for you. It's very short. When I was a kid, they had brownies <laughs> at church, right? Yeah. And I wanted a brownie, but my mom was like. No, you get brownies after church. So then we went back outside after church. All the brownies were gone. I threw a fucking fit because there were no brownies, right? Yeah, that's fucked up. And then I, everybody was like, you should be humble <laughs> because of, you know, we were at church. <laughs> Nerds. And then my pastor, who was a very nice man, bought me a special brownie. Oh. And that I think that was the first time where everybody was like, oh, isn't that nice? He bought her a brownie. And me, being the little devil child I was, <laughs> was like, this is fucking patronizing. <laughs> 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 All 
All right, I get that. Yeah. I anyway, that, that guy's dead. Rest in heaven. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus dead now. Christ.